Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's recap, we will be looking at a Japanese anime titled Trickster. The anime is about Kogaru Akechi, who founded the Boy Detectives Club, a private investigation agency that handles both big and small cases. During one inquiry, Kensuke Hanasaki, one of the younger members meets Yoshio Kobayashi, a strange amnesiac boy with a unique immortality talent. Hanasaki invites Kobayashi to join the Boy Detectives Club and help them solve cases after being impressed by his abilities. In exchange, Hanasaki offers to assist Kobayashi in finding a way to end his immortality. However, Kobayashi, who is initially uninterested, reluctantly agrees to Hanasaki's proposal. Despite his fundamental hate of people, he develops to respect and admire the group over time. Furthermore, this anime follows Akechi and the members of the Boy Detectives Club as they solve various cases while fighting a shadowy threat known as the Fiend with 20 Faces. I'm sure that at this point, you will want to know how everything plays out, right? Then sit back and enjoy. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Kensuke Hanasaki is your average high schooler who is part of the Boy Detectives Club, a private investigative firm that tackles both major and minor cases. One evening, a lady gets attacked by two men across a street, and Hanasaki arrives just in time to prevent the lady from being abducted. At first, his presence makes both men let go of the lady, and after some seconds of fighting Hanasaki, both men run away, leaving the lady behind. Meanwhile, Yoshio Kobayashi, a young teenager, tries his best to kill himself by stabbing his throat with glass, but his plan fails as the glass shatters upon reaching his neck. After Kobayashi finds out that he is still alive, he yells in disappointment and craves death. Minutes after Hanasaki is done fighting both men, the lady is confirmed safe, and Hanasaki hands her his card in case anything bothers her in the future. The following day, an aircraft flies over the city and releases a mechanized robot that instills fear in the civilians around. Elsewhere, Kogoru Akechi, the founder of the Boy Detectives Club, moves in a car to a specific location, and while at it, Inoue, a member of the investigative firm, drives the car and they both receive intel about the robot in the city from Detective Nakamura, a female cop. Detective Nakamura offers Akechi a job to solve the case of the robot, and to her surprise, Akechi is already aware of the robot in the city. Soon, the conversation with Detective Kakamura comes to an end, and Inoue drops Akechi just in front of a skyscraper. Meanwhile, Hanasaki embarks on a chase, aided by a mechanized owl controlled by Noro, a member of the firm. Noro provides information on what path Hanasaki should follow to find what or who he is looking for. During the chase, Noro hacks into the security system of the building Akechi arrived at and provides him the password to access the building from behind. However, with the aid of the password, Akechi gains access to the building and meets a bunch of tech operatives trying to analyze the robot situation. Soon, Akechi points a gun at a tech operative, and it looks as if he used the robot as a decoy to get access to the system personally. Because Akechi holds a gun pointed at 20 faces, the man disguised as a tech operative, all other tech operatives become terrified and run out of the room. Soon, 20 faces triggers a gas that blocks the sight of Akechi and evades the scene before the gas clears out. Elsewhere, Hanasaki continues his chase, and it turns out that he is chasing after a female dog named Melodina. After some time, Hansaki catches up with the dog, but the dog runs off to an abandoned building before he can get hold of the dog. Meanwhile, Akechi tells Inoue about his mission, adding that he blew it. After that, Inoue tries to predict the best route that 20 faces could have used to get out of the building quickly. Minutes later, Akechi meets a man at a table in a restaurant and points a gun at him under the table. It turns out that the man is responsible for the robot's actions in the city, and after some time, Akechi gets served his favorite tea under the orders of the man. Elsewhere, Hanasaki arrives at the abandoned building and meets the dog groaning against Kobayashi. Seconds later, Kobayashi warns Hanasaki to stay away from him, but the dog does not listen. Rather, she charges toward Kobayashi and gets killed by Kobayashi's invisible force field in the process. After the dog dies, Kobayashi yells, telling Hanasaki that he warned him to stay away, and then he leaves the abandoned building by jumping several stories to the ground. When Hanasaki observed that Kobayashi jumped, he did not believe his eyes as Kobayashi landed successfully on the ground and took off. Elsewhere, where the meeting between Akechi and the man comes to an end as they both call it quits for the day. After Kobayashi gets to a safe location, he holds a gun to his mouth and pulls the trigger, but he does not die. Rather, he chokes on the bullet and spits it out of his mouth. Later that day, Detective Nakamura successfully recovers the robot and looks pissed because the robot had no explosives as suspected earlier. At sunset, Hanasaki arrives at Kobayashi's location and tries to talk to him. When Kobayashi notices Hanasaki's presence, he jumps off another skyscraper to the ground and lands safely without dying. Soon, Hanasaki jumps off the skyscraper 
and uses his tools to assist his landing. After that, Hansaki continues to chase after Kobayashi till the point where Kobayashi gets tired from running. Following that, Hansaki aims a soft drink at Kobayashi, but the drink gets sliced in half by Kobayashi's force field. At this point, Hanasaki finds his situation amusing as he falls to the ground as a result of Kobayashi's forces field. Soon, it gets dark, and Hanasaki drops a soft drink just beside Kobayashi, and they both enter into a conversation concerning Kobayashi's powers. Soon, their conversation comes to an end as Hanasaki detects an explosion that occurs miles away from him. As Hanasaki leaves to the point of impact, he forgets his wallet on the ground beside Kobayashi and dashes off. While on his way, he gets on a call with Inoue and Noro speaking about the route from earlier. Hanasaki suspects that 20 Faces is up to something, but Inoue tells Hanasaki not to act on his own. At this point, Hanasaki does not heed Inoue's wishes, and as a result, he arrives at the site where the explosion occurs and tries to save a civilian trapped in the fire. Meanwhile, Kobayashi arrives just outside the site, and Inoue heads to the site as well in his car. Back at the site, Kobayashi gets inside and finds Hanasaki lying unconscious beside a man who begs for help. Because Kobayashi cannot help the man, the man gets pissed and aims a spanner at Kobayashi, but the spanner gets destroyed in the process. Because of that, the man freaks out and looks terrified because of Kobayashi's powers. Seconds later, Hanasaki regains consciousness and saves the man from the fire. Even after the man can get out of the building alive, he does not appreciate Hanasaki. Rather, he insults both Kobayashi and Hanasaki and runs away. Minutes after that, Hanasaki offers Kobayashi the opportunity to join the Boy Detectives Club adding that if he joins, he promises to kill him. One thing leads to another, and Hanasaki tries to shake Kobayashi after finding out his name. As a result, the force field tosses Hanasaki to the ground. Inoue, who arrives at the scene at this point, gets the wrong impression and thinks that Kobayashi attacked Hanasaki, then points a gun at Kobayashi. Following that, Inoue loses his mechanized leg because Kobayashi goes berserk on him and runs away. The following day, Akechi charges Detective Nakamura an additional fee as she tries to find out what 20 faces is after. Meanwhile, Kobayashi lies alone at a scum and checks the wound on his hand. After some days, a lady arrives at the firm seeking Akechi's services, but she meets Inoue and Hanasaki instead, as as Akechi is not available. Soon, she relays her complaint stating that her boyfriend who is living with her possesses threatening letters, and she adds that her boyfriend does something in secret, and she wonders what it is. She also adds that she found the letters on her boyfriend's desk, but has no clue who the letters are for. Hours after the meeting with the lady, Hanaki proceeds to handle the case, and he spies on the lady's boyfriend from a distance on a rooftop. While on Hanasaki's spying mission, Inoue gets on a call with him and asks if he has seen any weird activity from the lady's boyfriend, but in response, Hanasaki Hanasaki states that he can't tell, adding that he will talk to the lady's boyfriend in person. The lady's boyfriend works at a roadside restaurant, and Hanasaki gets to the restaurant to place an order for food. While interacting with the boyfriend, he notices nothing suspicious about him, and then he reports his observations to Inoue, who is in school at the time. During the call with Inoue, Hanasaki states that the lady's boyfriend does not have the face of someone who would send threatening letters, adding that his face looks pure. After Inoue gets this info from Hanasaki, he makes a joking remark never to ask Hanasaki for his opinion again. When it is time for Hanasaki to pay for his meal, he discovers that he does not have his wallet and someone offers to lend him some. Meanwhile, Kobayashi searches a trash can for leftovers and then arrives at a vending machine after some second. At this point, Hanasaki is left in a difficult position because he is hungry and his wallet is missing. Minutes later, Kobayashi arrives at a spot after using money from Hanasaki's wallet to buy food from a vending machine. However, when Kobayashi tries to have his meal, the food container splits in half, and as a result, the food pours onto the ground. Also, Hanasaki laughs from a rooftop because he sees the food pour to the floor. Seconds later, Hanasaki comes down from the roof and tries to convince Kobayashi to join him on a mission, but he declines stating that Hanasaki should go away. Along the line, Hanasaki receives info that the lady's boyfriend is moving and then Hanasaki manages to convince Kobayashi to help him tail the man. After some time on the road, the lady's boyfriend arrives at a skyscraper to deliver an order and the security lets him into the building. Elsewhere, Hanasaki and Kobayashi try to catch up with the man and on the way, Hanasaki gets curious and asks about Kobayashi's background including the origin of his powers. In response, Kobayashi replies stating that he does not remember anything and then Akechi drops info stating that the nature of the threat letters smells funny. He adds that the threat letters smell like oil and Noro agrees stating that the man works at a restaurant. Along the line, Akechi discovers that the clues are too obvious to lead back to the man, and if someone wants to do something like that, he will leave no clues behind. Moments later, Kobayashi and Hansaki arrive at the building where the lady's boyfriend is present. When they both get into the building, they encounter difficulties from the security guard, but Inoue arrives just in time in his wheelchair and bails Hanasaki out. For some reason, Kobayashi is not present at the scene because he wanders off to get access to the building from the back. 
Seconds later, Kobayashi gains access to the building and he steals food to satisfy his hunger at the time. At the building, an event is about to take place and the lady's boyfriend gives word that the catered meal is ready. After some time, Hansaki arrives at Kobayashi's position and finds him eating food from the pot. After Kobayashi ingests food from the pot, he spits it out immediately and states that there is something inside the pot that should not be eaten. Soon, the lady's boyfriend arrives at the scene and finds out that Kobayashi has taken from the food he made. Moving on, Hansaki states that there is poison in the food, and he questions the boyfriend why he put poison in the food. When Hanasaki makes this accusation, the man looks shocked and as though he is unaware of what is going on. Along the line, the boyfriend reveals that he insisted on delivering the food to the event over his master because he wanted everyone to know how great alkaline spring water is. Minutes later, Hansaki heads off with Kobayashi to find the lady because they suspect that the boyfriend is not the one behind the letters. Meanwhile, Inoue confirms that the lady is responsible for producing the water from the boyfriend and after that, he tells him that the lady tried to frame him for a crime by making the threat letter and poisoning the food. When Inoue states this to the the boyfriend, he does not believe Inoue's words, and to prove his girlfriend's innocence, he drinks from the water, but he falls to the ground and suffers from intense poisoning. Minutes later, the event at the building begins, and the KD offers the moderator the water to drink. Just as the moderator tries to drink the water, Hanasaki arrives at the scene and prevents the moderator from drinking to his death. After that, the lady tries to run away, but Hansaki catches up to her and prevents her from escaping. After Hanasaki catches up to the lady, she falls to the ground, and he reveals that her boyfriend is dead. Even at this point, the lady lies stating that her boyfriend threatened her, but Hanasaki pours the truth out on the lady's face. Later that evening, after the case is solved, Hanasaki enters into a conversation with Akechi, the boss, about Kobayashi's future. That night, Kobayashi is present at his regular spot responding to the call of nature. The following day, Hanasaki tries to measure the minimum safe distance he can get not to experience the effect of Kobayashi's force field. After that, Kobayashi tries to make a run out of the building, but Akechi proceeds out of the elevator, and as a result, Kobayashi's force field slices off a bit of Akechi's cigarette. Following that, Akechi proceeds to his seat and outlines rules for Kobayashi, as he is now part of the Boy Detectives Club. Seconds after Akechi is done outlining the rules for Kobayashi, an old woman proceeds out of the elevator to see Akechi. Minutes into the conversation with the old lady, she reveals that her son has been missing for about three days. Also, she adds that she has to look after her ailing husband, adding that her son, Nemoto, is well known as he got the bronze medal for competing in the Olympics. Toward the end of the conversation with the lady, Akechi finds out if she asks her son's colleagues about the whereabouts of her son, but she answers by stating that her son has no friends, adding that he spends most of his time at home. After that, Kobayashi speaks rudely to the client about suggesting death to the client so she can escape her problems. Hours after the conversation with the old woman, Inoue warns Kobayashi in his car about his behavior towards the client, adding that he will not tolerate any rude behavior from Kobayashi. Later that day, Inoue meets up with Detective Nakamura at school and collects intel about Nomoto, the lady's son. Moving on, Noro uses her tech skills to analyze Nomoto's lifestyle pattern from before he went missing, and she finds out that he never went out more than 500 meters from his home. Also, Noro tells Inoue that Nomoto had no interactions with any friends, and she adds that his phone has always been with his parents. During the search for Nemoto, Hanasaki moves along the crowd in the city to see if he can get info on Nemoto. After a while, he gets back to Inoue's car to report his findings. Along the line, Kobayashi does something mistakenly with his powers that makes Inoue get upset instantly, and wonder what good Kobayashi is doing to the team. As a result, Kobayashi takes off into the streets in anger, and Hanasaki finds him after some minutes of searching for him. After Hanasaki finds Kobayashi, he tries to cheer him up and encourage encourage him. While at it, a man around their location tells them to leave the area, and when Hanasaki tries to get info from the man concerning Nomoto, the man declines to answer. Soon, Hanasaki manages to get info from the man in exchange for money, and he discovers a shady building that accepts anyone provided they pass a physical test. After Hanasaki gets more info about the building from Noro, he proceeds to the building with Kobayashi and Inoue to carry out some investigation. On getting into the building, Hanasaki and the others find out from the receptionist that they cannot get information about anyone living in the building because the people in charge of the building hope to protect the privacy of their residents. Even as Hanasaki insists on getting the info, he gets escorted out of the building with the others via security. Minutes later, Hanasaki and Kobayashi get access to the building illegally by climbing a fence. After they both enter the main building, Noro uses the owl to run facial recognition on the residents present in the building, and Inoue finds 
finds out that the people present in the building are present in the missing file that Detective Nakamura gave him earlier. While in the building, Kobayashi gets access to a resident's room when he tries to rest on a wall. At this point, Hanasaki sees this as an opportunity to interrogate the man present in the room, but the man calls security when he discovers that Hanasaki is in his room. Furthermore, Hanasaki evades the scene to avoid being captured by the security, and while at it, an old man lets them into his room. Seconds later, Hanasaki displays Nomoto's picture and asks if he has seen him. Minutes later, the old man finds out from Hanasaki that Nomoto has been missing for about three days, and with this information, he reveals that Nomoto will be undergoing the tests. The test is a physical examination test to find out if new intakes can fit in the building, and after Hanasaki gets this info from the old man, he leaves the man's room and tries to get to the lab where the physical examination takes place. On the way, Hanasaki sees an old man forcefully sedated and taken to the lab for examination. On getting to the lab, Hanasaki and Kobayashi find out that the scientists in the lab extract vital organs from the people in the guise of physical examinations. Due to Hanasaki's presence at the lab, security surrounds Kobayashi and Hanasaki, but Kobayashi uses a device to show Inoue the face of the head scientist of the building. After Inoue confirms Kumoto, the head scientist's identity, Inoue finds out that he is the same medical examiner that Detective Nakamura was looking for in the past, named Kiyomoto. Soon, Hanasaki triggers an opening that allows the owl to gain access to the lab and record the inhumane activities going on in the lab. The footage of the lab is then sent to the residents, and when they see the video, they all run out of the building. All attempts to stop Hanasaki by Kyumoto fail, and the police arrive and surround the building in seconds. Soon, Inoue finds Nomoto who tries to escape the building, and after some time, he delivers Nomoto to his mother. Hours later, Detective Nakamura goes to a press conference where she exposes the activities of Kyumoto on live television Vision, denying that the police have no connection to his activities in the end. The following day, Akechi approves of Kobayashi's membership to the firm, and Hanasaki is pretty happy about it. After some days, Inoue receives a gift from a studnet at school for Katsuda, who is in the hospital. Meanwhile, Detective Nakamura is on patrol duty with her colleague Miyanishi, and they both drive on the road and stop at a point where an accident involving another cop occurred. At the scene of the accident, the surviving cop gets taken out of the car while Nakamura finds a tape placed beside the cop. When she picks up the tape, she realizes that 20 faces had a hand in the accident and it seems as if he is sending a message. Hours later, Kobayashi calls Hanasaki pissed about the fact that Akechi found his spot and arrived there. Minutes later, Akechi gets on a call with Hanasaki where he questions his schooling activities. Their conversation gets to a point where Akechi emphasizes that Hanasaki needs to go to school on the day of the month when it is required. At this point, Hanasaki is interested in the new case, but Akechi agrees to tell him only when his classes are over later in the day. After the call with Hanasaki, Akechi tells Kobayashi to follow him, adding that he will do as he says because he is now a member of the firm. Even as Kobayashi shows some signs of resistance, Detective Nakamura, who is present at the time, threatens to ban Kobayashi from accessing his spot if he does not follow Akechi's orders. Now Kobayashi has no choice but to do as Akechi says because his spot is on the line. Moving on, Akechi, Nakamura, Inoue, and Kobayashi are present at the firm where they try to access the device left at the accident scene that Nakamura found earlier. It turns out that the other passenger, Senior Officer Kanda, who was involved in the accident that happened earlier, is missing, and Nakamura reveals this info to Akechi and the others. Also, she adds that Officer Imaizumi, the officer who survived the accident, passed out at the scene of the accident and did not see the culprit who placed the tape in the car. However, when Akechi plays the tape, Nakamura and the others see that Officer Kanda is present in the video, and his life is in danger if Akechi does not do something about it. Before the video comes to an end, Akechi confirms that 20 faces, while Nakamura is pissed and wants to handle the situation as soon as possible. It takes a while before Akechi agrees to accept the job from Detective Nakamura, but he agrees to it in the end. Meanwhile, Hanasaki has a long day at school, and he checks the time to see how many hours he has left before he joins in on the case. In an attempt to solve the current case, Inoue uses his photographic memory to recall the contents of the video and decipher the coded message that Officer Kanda was trying to pass across to his viewers. From Inoue's deductions, deciphers the code and gets a location in the process. It turns out that the location is the distribution channel. And after he reveals this to Detective Nakamura, she orders Miyanishi to call for backup at that location immediately. Hours later, Kobayashi and Inoue arrive at the distribution channel to inspect the place. Just below Kobayashi and Inoue are policemen who observe the area for any unusual activity. Along the line, Inoue thinks deeply and realizes that it is not like 20 faces to make the mistake of overlooking Officer Kanda's message. Soon, 
Inoue loses signal while communicating with Hanasaki, and he proceeds on the mission with Kobayashi. Minutes after losing signal, Inoue hears some footsteps and attempts a camouflage that prevents the intruders from seeing them. Just as one of the men throws a used cigarette on the ground, it comes in contact with Kobayashi's force field and splits in half. As a result, both men are aware that Hanasaki and Kobayashi are present, and a battle begins between Inoue and the men. Furthermore, as Inoue engages in combat with the men in his wheelchair, Kobayashi does nothing to help, and soon, Inoue gets knocked to the ground. At this point, both men are shocked that Kobayashi did not try to help Inoue, and they leave the scene seconds after threatening Kobayashi. Minutes later, Inoue regains consciousness and he finds himself completely sealed in at his spot stuck with Kobayashi. Soon, Kobayashi attempts to break the walls that sealed them in, but he fails in the first trial. After a couple of trials, he stops and sits on the ground. Inoue, who witnesses this, is pissed about the fact that Kobayashi is resting, but Kobayashi mocks him, saying that he is useless in their situation. Things get serious as water begins to enter the place, putting Kobayashi and Inoue in a tight position. At a hospital, Akechi proceeds to interrogate Officer Imaizuma, and he shuts the door right behind Detective Nakamura to prevent her from coming in. Seconds into the interrogation with Imaizuma, Akechi gets rough and chokes him because he is aware that he is linked with 20 faces. Soon, their conversation comes to an end as Imaizuma tells Akechi that he has a message for him from 20 faces. Some time ago, Inoue played lawn tennis with his friend Katsuk from school, and after they played the game for a while, for some reason, Inoue promised Katsuda that he would not quit in life. Back in real time, Inoue remembers this promise as water flows into the place where he is trapped in the distribution channel. At this point, all efforts Kobayashi makes to break the walls and free himself, including Inoue, fail leaving Inoue in a difficult position. Meanwhile, Akechi uses force to extract information from Imaizumi. Elsewhere, it reaches the time when Hanasaki is allowed to get out of school and he leaves class immediately. Back in the hospital, during the interrogation session with Imaizumi, Kobayashi finds out that 20 faces stole data from the underground channels in the past, and he has access to the security system and drainage control system. Also, Imaizumi reveals that 20 faces aims to break the trust of civilian police, and Akechi quickly realizes that the policemen at the distribution channel are in danger. Soon, Detective Nakamura manages manages to get access to the room just as Akechi is about to leave. Seconds later, Akechi reveals that there is more than one hostage in the distribution channel. Moving on, Hanasaki gets info about the policemen, and his new objective is to find and rescue them within a strict time limit. On his way to the drainage channel, he meets up with Katsuta, and begs him to help save Inoue. It takes a bit of convincing before Katsuta agrees to help Hanasaki, and he gives Hanasaki a life on his bike to the distribution channel. Back in the confined space where Kobayashi and Inoue are trapped, Inoue tells Kobayashi to escape through the pipe that brings water into the confined space from above, adding that Kobayashi should tell the others that the map is fake. After some time, Kobayashi makes it out of the confined space, while Inoue uses his tools to try and escape. Although Inoue has a bad leg, he uses his strength and endurance to climb a rope so he can make it out of the confined space without drowning. In a distant flashback, Katsuda and Inoue were solving a case and things went sideways, as Inoue tried to save a civilian and lost his ability to use one of his legs in the process. Even after some time, when the leg was supposed to be healed, he had trouble getting up on his feet to walk. At that time, his nurses noticed his condition and assumed that it was more of a psychological issue. After the incident with Inoue's leg occurred in the past, Katsuda quit the boy detectives club and left Inoue alone. Back in real time, Hanasaki arrives at the distribution channel to warn the police officers that they should not proceed further in their operations. On arriving at the location, Kobayashi comes out of the water and tries to catch his breath. Minutes later, Akechi is present at the scene, and Hanasaki finds out that the police officers do not want to leave their trapped comrades behind. Also, Hanasaki reveals the info about the fake map, while Akechi asks what happened to Inoue. As Inoue fights for his life in the confined space, Katsuda arrives at Inoue's location just in time, and pulls him out of the confined space from above. After Hanasaki confirms that Inoue is safe, he deploys lots of mini Scott drones to inspect the distribution channels and update the fake map. Minutes later, Akechi takes off on a bike with Hanasaki following Inoue's directions to find Officer Kanda, the missing hostage. Meanwhile, Detective Nakamura receives info from her colleague that the press is waiting for her outside. It turns out that 20 Faces sent a message to all the media about the trapped police officers in the distribution channel. However, while following Following Inoue's directions, Akechi rides the bike to the point where he meets 20 Faces and the hostage with other two men in masks. Seconds after arriving at 20 Faces' position, Hanasaki demands for the hostage 
but Twenty Faces asks which. At this point, Hanasaki realizes that the police officers are in danger because Twenty Faces trapped them in a confined space with the intent to drown them. Minutes later, Twenty Faces states that if Hanasaki and Akechi can take Officer Kanda, the hostage, from him, they win. After that, Twenty Faces flees the scene using a speedboat while Akechi and Hanasaki chase after him using a bike. As Akechi rides the bike on the pavement close to the water, he tries his best to catch up with Twenty Faces, and on the way, Kobayashi falls into the water. Because of Kobayashi's force field, the first speedboat that the masked men travel on splits in half as it approaches Kobayashi. As Twenty Faces witnesses this, he holds his brakes, and Hanasai seizes the opportunity to take him hostage from Twenty Faces' speedboat. After getting the hostage, Detective Nakamura reports to the press that her investigator, Akichi, has secured the hostage. Minutes later, Twenty Faces escapes the scene using water to his advantage after addressing Kobayashi and the others as tools for Akichi. Following that, the trapped policemen in the distribution channel get released, and the press records this and reports to the public. Meanwhile, Katsuwada carries Inoue on his back and proceeds out of the distribution channel. On the way, Inoue apologizes for his actions in the past, and then Katsuda reveals that he wants to become a police officer like Nakamura since he is not cut out to be a detective like Akechi adding it was for this reason, he quit the club. The following day, all attempts made to find Twenty Faces fail as Akechi confirms his absence. Later that day, Kobayashi enjoys lots of snacks alone and shares none with Hanasaki, who addresses him as a glutton. After some days, Hansaki records as Kobayashi jumps off a skyscraper and after a couple of attempts, Kobayashi does not look hurt or affected in any way. After the suicide attempts by Kobayashi, he heads to a spot with Hanasaki, where Hanasaki mocks him, stating that the place is filthy. After that, Hanasaki suggests that Kobayasahi sleeps at Akechi's house, but Kobayashi declines the offer. Because everyone else in the club is busy, Hanasaki is stuck with Kobayashi because he does not have anything to do but play with him. Later that morning, Hanasaki accepts six jobs from clients and reports this to Inoue, who looks unsure that Hanasaki can solve all of them. Before the call with Inoue comes to an end, Inoue advises Hanasaki to stay out of trouble, adding that he won't be of help if Hanasaki gets into trouble. The only way that Hanasaki can convince Kobayashi to tag along with him is that he promised him death, or at least a way for him to die. Later that morning, Hanasaki arrives at a client's house and finds out his next objective. It turns out that he is to get more of a vase specified by his client, and he heads out with Kobayashi to complete the mission. Along the line, Hanasaki arrives at Noro's apartment with Kobayashi, and Noro looks to be in a mood because Hanasaki came unannounced. While in Noro's place, Hanasaki gives Noro the vase to print an exact duplicate of it using a sophisticated 3D printer. Seconds after Noro begins duplicating the vase, she offers Kobayashi a device to fill in his personal information because he is a member of the club. Following that, Noro finds out that Kobayashi holds no memory of his personal information including his birthday, age, and other details. Soon, Hanasaki leaves Noro's apartment with Kobayashi to complete their second mission while the vase is still printing. While on the second mission, Hanasaki takes a device to Otomo, his friend at school, to repair it. After a short while, the device gets repaired with additional features, and Hanasaki heads to meet Inoue at the school library. After the meeting with Inoue, Hanasaki heads out to deliver the fixed device to his client at a restaurant. When the client gets the device, he finds out that it works perfectly, but freaks out when he sees the additional feature that Otomo placed in the device. Moving on, Hanasaki heads to deliver the printed vase and the original to his client. But when he arrives at the client's house, his client's mother opens up the door and is pissed about the fact that her daughter tried to duplicate the vase. Even after the first mission does not go as planned, the other missions fail and Hanasaki's clients are left unsatisfied. Kobayashi's involvement in some of the cases ruins Hanasaki's mission because of his powers. Later that day, Hanasaki embarks on the last mission which involves investigating a person involved in an affair. Minutes later, the lady Hanasaki is supposed to watch walks out of a corner and proceeds to her destination. While at it, Hanasaki and Kobayashi keep close tabs on the lady as they walk silently behind her. Soon, the lady arrives at a car where she meets a guy inside. Still, when Hanasaki tries to outline what they will do next, Kobayashi meets up with the lady and asks her if she is having an affair hence, sabotaging the mission in the end as Hanasaki has no evidence to present to his client. At sunset after their last mission goes south, Hanasaki walks along with Kobayashi, who states that their jobs cannot go well with him being around. Minutes later, Hanasaki stops when he sees that a boy crashed his drone into a factory. Hanasaki, upon accessing the situation, leaves Kobayashi behind and tries to get the drone 
drone for the boy from the factory. On getting into the factory, Hanasaki sees the drone, but he has a hard time trying to get it because the boy outside tries to use his controller to get his drone back. One thing leads to another, and the drone makes way for the furnace present in the factory. In split seconds, Kobayashi arrives out of nowhere and catches the drone just in time before it gets into the furnace. After catching the drone, Kobayashi falls into the furnace, but the drone is unaffected because of his powers. Soon, Hanasaki and Kobayashi return the drone to the boy and they both head off the premises. On their way, Hanasaki expresses his frustration that Kobayashi was not hurt by the furnace and after some time, Hanasai suggests that they both have dinner and Kobayashi agrees. Later that evening, when Kobayashi gets to Akechi's house, he meets a surprise party planned out for him by Akechi and the others. It turns out that the part is to mark Kobayashi's birthday, as they have assigned that day to be his birthday. In the end, Kobayashi smiles as he is gifted a better place to sleep. Later that night, Hanasaki wakes up in Akechi's house and heads to his house, and passes out on his bed while Kobayashi is asleep in his new spot. After a few days, Akechi sits in his home and watches the news where the newscaster report a series of events that happened in the past relating to 20 faces. While watching the TV, Akechi reminisces on his past when he was a mercenary. Seconds later, Akechi regains consciousness as Detective Nakamura taps him asking him when he will go to work. Sometime in the past, a lady gets assaulted by some guys in an alley. Along the line, Akechi arrives just in time and saves the lady from the men. After that, he introduces himself to the lady and helps her to her feet. Back in real time, Akechi is in a conversation with Detective Nakamura, but he looks distracted as he thinks about his past. During the conversation with Nakamura, Nakamura asks Akechi what went on between them, and Akechi ignores the question and heads to sing his favorite song, for Detective Nakamura. In the past, Akechi sits and gets drinks with the lady he saved. During the conversation with the lady, she tells Akechi that he is the only person who can change her world ever since they met. It looks as if the lady is into Akechi because she maintains eye contact while speaking to him. Soon, a man gives Akechi a gun to fire a shot at a can of drink, but Akechi takes some time before he fires the shot. In the present, Hanasaki meets up with his father at home. Hanasaki's father is an upstanding man with strict principles and values. While in a conversation with his father, Hanasaki realizes that he was summoned because his dad wanted to check up on him. Toward the end of their conversation, Hanasaki's dad reveals that he is going on a business trip adding that Hanasaki should stay out of trouble and call the maid if he needs anything. It looks as if Hanasaki is happy that his dad is traveling because he smiles when he finds out. Just outside Hanasaki's dad's office, Kobayashi enters the pool and sits on the floaters. After the meeting with Hanasaki's dad, Hanasaki strips and gets into the pool with Kobayashi. While in the pool, Hanasaki reveals that he was adopted with his older brother into the Hanasaki family in the past. He also adds that he is not related to his elder brother by blood, but he moved out of the house, leaving him behind. Soon, Hanasaki aims a water gun at Kobayashi, and he finds out that the water can make contact with Kobayashi's clothes. Meanwhile, Akechi recalls when he killed a man named Akechi in the past. Back in real time, he is even more distracted when speaking with Nakamura, who just finished singing a song for him. It turns out that Nakamura sang because Akechi promised to tell her about his history with 20 faces. Seconds after Nakamura is done singing, Akechi reveals that he killed both of his dads, adding that 20 faces addresses him as evil because of his actions in the past. As Detective Nakamura tries to get more info from Akechi, Akechi demands that she reveal a deeper part of herself. Along the line, Akechi realizes that Detective Nakamura has a date from her nails, makeup, hair, and choice of food. After Akechi confirms his deduction, he makes a joke about Nakamura's date being hotter than him, and Nakamura leaves the restaurant. Back in the past when Akechi was a child, he often got assaulted by his father, who was abusive at the time, and Akechi's name was Susuke at that time. Back in real time, Akechi orders a glass of beer, but as the waitress gives him his order, the beer pours a little bit on the table and he looks upset. Just when he asks for something to wipe his hands, the waitress asks to shake his hadies, and he looks shocked. Back at the Hanasaki residence, Hanasaki receives info from Inoue that they are getting multiple job requests from different clients. Because of that, Hanasaki now has to get to the office with Kobayashi to handle jobs from the clients. Later that day, Akechi picks up his device and discovers that Inoue called him multiple times. As he tries to get dressed, he sees his gun and reminisces on an event that happened in the past. It turns out that a man named Akechi, a detective at that time, saved Akechi from his abusive father and took him in. Moving on, Akechi reveals to the lady that he saved in the past that he could not save his second father, and he died because of him. Also, he states that before he left Japan, he went to see his biological father, who was sick at the time, for the last time. After he met with his father, who was sick at that time, he assumed the name Akechi, and before he left his dad, his dad told him that he left him to die. After receiving this info from Akechi, the lady promises to be by Akechi's side 
aside, adding that she will never let him get bored. Back in the present, Akechi gets in a car with Inoue and recalls a twisted memory of the lady. Minutes later, a broadcast interrupts Akechi's movie, and the person in the broadcast announces total independence of a specified area of land from Japan, naming the area Kokorogaoka Burrow. When Hanasaki sees the broadcast, he realizes that the person in the broadcast is his long-lost brother, Haru. After Hanasaki is done watching the broadcast, he runs away and leaves Kobayashi behind in the crowd. Soon, Hanasaki arrives at Akechi's office and demands an audience with Akechi concerning his brother's broadcast. At this time, Inoue sits with a client, and Akechi prevents Hanasaki from speaking because of the client's presence. After Inoue accepts the offer from the client, the client leaves and Akechi lets go of Hanasaki's mouth. Seconds later, Hanasaki begs Akechi to look into his brother's case, but he declines, adding that detectives are not heroes. After Akechi refuses to help Hanasaki, Hanasaki reveals that he will get help from Detective Nakamura, but Akechi interrupts Hanasaki, saying that if a detective gets involved in his brother's case, it's all over for Hanasaki's brother. Even as Hanasaki is upset that Akechi declined to help him, he gets grounded by Akechi, who prevents him from leaving the building. At this point, Kobayashi is present, and Hanasaki walks past him heading for the roof without saying a word. After Hanasaki leaves the scene, Inoue asks Akechi if he's sure of his actions, and Akechi states that he said what was on his mind. Soon, Akechi detects the presence of another visitor, and Inoue goes to get the door, but he finds a package on the ground. Because they do not know what is enclosed in the package, Kobayashi is asked to open the package for safety reasons, and Akechi sees a coin bank inside. After that, Akechi asks for a favor from Kobayashi, and he agrees. Just outside the building, Hanasaki uses his tools to leave the rooftop and heads for a walk. While at it, Kobayashi arrives and Hanasaki quickly realizes that Akechi sent him to keep an eye on him. Seconds later, Hanasaki enters into a brief conversation with Kobayashi, and he leaves after he tells Kobayashi to leave him alone. Minutes after, Hanasaki leaves the property, Akechi becomes aware of Hansaki's actions and declines Inoue's suggestion to follow him. Elsewhere, Miyanishi, Detective Nakamura's colleague, is present in a meeting with his superiors concerning the broadcast that occurred earlier. Minutes into the meeting, Officer Miyanishi is worried about Nakamura's whereabouts, and he tries to reach her with his phone. Meanwhile, Detective Nakamura is on a date in a film house, seeing a movie. Afterward, Hanasaki runs on the streets trying to get to his destination. On his way, he recalls the time he spent with his big brother, who was always there for him in the past. Minutes later, Hanasaki comes out of a river after swimming for a while to arrive at Kokorogaoka Burrow, the place marked out by his brother. When Hanasaki gets out of the water, he observes a yellow line demarcating the area, and he proceeds into the settlement. Just before Hanasaki is about to cross the yellow line, his brother grabs him from behind and sedates him, making him fall asleep instantly. Some years ago, Hanasaki saw his brother in his dad's office, climbed a tree, and listened to the conversation his brother had with his dad. During the conversation, Hanasaki's dad reveals that he wants to return Hanasaki to the orphanage, adding that he decided when he first arrived in his house. As Hanasaki's brother hears his father's intentions, he rebukes his father, stating that Hanasaki is his brother. Meanwhile, Hanaki, who was present on the tree at the time, listens to everything being said in his dad's office. Back in the present, Hanasaki regains consciousness and hugs his brother because he has missed him. After that, Haru, Hanasaki's brother, takes Hanasaki on a tour and shows him around his new country, as he calls it. Kokoroga Oka Burrow features farm animals, solar panels, and civilians who carry out their day-to-day -day activities. While on the tour with Haru, Hanasaki observes tags attached to the skin of all civilians present. After he makes this observation, he gets curious and asks Haru what they are, and in response, Haru replies stating that the tags are a means of identification to identify the civilians as his family. Seconds later, Hanasaki realizes that he has a tag attached to his skin, and Haru warns him not to take it off, adding that if he does, he will die. After Haru reveals this info, Hanasaki looks shocked, and then Haru proceeds to show Hanasaki his mother. Elsewhere, Inoue worries about Hanasaki and Akechi wakes up after some hours of sleeping. One thing leads to another, and Akechi begins to remember the time when Hanasaki offered him some money to find Haru, his brother, in the past. At that time, Akechi declined the offer, but Hanasaki was still persistent. One day, Hanasaki tells tells Akechi that his father does not care that Haru is gone when Akechi tells him to involve his parents in the case. In today's time, Hanasaki meets up with Haru's mother, and she asks him if he likes it there. Minutes later, Haru's mother reveals that they have done nothing wrong, adding that she does not want the life she has built in her new country to be taken away. Also, Haru states that all the civilians in the country have an unspeakable past, adding that they all found their way by depending on his mother. Meanwhile, Hanasaki is worried that they cannot keep up with their operation for so long. Along the line, a chopper breaches the yellow line of the new country, but the defense systems embedded in the walls of the new country fire warning shots at the chopper to chase it away. After the brief display, Hanasaki realizes that anyone without an ID will be killed if they cross the set boundary. In the past, Haru left Hanasaki because he wanted Hanasaki to stay 
away and have a home with his dad. One day, after Haru's absence, Hanasaki gets jumped by some men at an alley, and Akechi arrives at the scene to save him. After that, Hanasaki begs Akechi to make him a strong man. Back in the present, Haru begs Hanasaki to become a family again with him. Elsewhere, Officer Miyashi receives info that a representative of the borough is calling to speak to the station. Meanwhile, Akechi receives a call from someone, and after the call, he gets prepared to meet Hanasaki. Later that day, Haru tries to convince Hanasaki to join his new family so they can be together, while Inoue drives Akechi and Kobayashi in his car, heading for Hanasaki's position, Kokorogaoka Burrow. As Akechi makes his way to Kokorogaoka Burrow, he receives info from Noro stating that police officers present at Kokorogaoka Burrow have failed to gain access to the settlement. Also, Detective Nakamura gets on a call with Akechi, stating that she will arrive at the settlement soon. At sunset, Haru engages in a conversation with Hanasaki on a rooftop, stating that his mom reached out to him after he left the Hanasaki residence for good, adding that he wants to protect the family that his mom created. Toward the end of their conversation, he states that if they all conduct themselves well, someone is sure to reach out to them. Moving on, a representative of Kokorogaoka Borough calls the police station trying to make demands. During the call, the representative requests 10 billion yen, adding that if they receive the money, they can pretend to be terrorists so that the police can take credit. It turns out that the representative is Haru's mother who plans to use the civilians present at the borough as leverage so she can get money and escape. After the call with the police, Haru's mom speaks to Twenty Faces, who proceeds out of the shadows. It turns out that Twenty Faces is working directly with Haru's mom, as he was the one who supplied the settlement with weapons to protect themselves. Soon, it quickly gets dark, and Inoue arrives at the borough with Akechi and Kobayashi. Minutes later, Kobayashi proceeds to cross the yellow line following Akechi's plan, and after that, he proceeds to get access to the fence. Meanwhile, Haru rounds up his his conversation with Hanasaki after Hanasaki finds out that he knows Akechi. After Kobayashi gets past the fence, he encounters heavy fire from some citizens of the borough, but because of his powers, he comes out unharmed. However, Haru departs Hanasaki's presence, and he orders men to assume strategic positions to prevent foreigners from accessing the borough. After that, Hanasaki forces him to give up information about Akechi. It turns out that Akechi found Haru in the past, when Hanasaki asked Akechi to look for Haru, but Haru denied his name following his mother's wishes. After that, Akechi told Haru never to look for Hanasaki again until he parted ways with the woman that he called his mother. Back in the present when Hanasaki gets this info from Haru, he looks shocked but Haru has no time for more explanation and he runs off to handle the situation in the borough. At this point, Kobayashi gains access to the central power grid supplying electricity to the entire borough and destroys it causing all security systems of the borough to shut down. Seconds after that, Akechi gains access to the borough and catches up with Haru's mother while other citizens of the borough try to evade the premises. Soon, Hanasaki arrives at Akechi's position with Haru and sees Akechi pointing a gun at Haru's mother. At this point, Akechi is aware that Haru's mother was the person behind the call at the police station, while Haru thinks that Hanasaki called Akechi to their settlement. Along the line, Haru points a gun at Hanasaki in anger, and Akechi shoots Haru on his hand when he sees this. After Akechi shoots Haru, Hanasaki gets upset and tries to prevent Akechi from taking another shot by blocking him. As a result, Haru seizes the opportunity to aim his gun at Akechi, but he gets shot in his chest by Detective Nakamura before he pulls the trigger. Also, other police officers arrive at the scene and place Haru's mom under arrest. Following the incident at the borough, the media announces the success at the borough, while Akechi and the others are at the police station, waiting for Hanasaki to be done with Detective Nakamura. Minutes later, Hanasaki proceeds out of a room in the place's station, and he reveals that Twenty Faces was involved in the case. However, Hanasaki is pissed with Akechi over the fact that Akechi did not tell him where his brother was, even though he knew where he was. Soon, a heated argument begins between Hanasaki and Akechi, where Hanasaki blames Akechi for all that happened. After a while, Akechi tells Detective Nakamura to see Hanasaki home, while he suspends Hanasaki from detective work for the time being. After Hanasaki gets suspended, he states that he will never work for Akechi, and he leaves with Nakamura to his home. As Detective Nakamura drops Hanasaki in front of his house, she finds out that he is a rich kid because of the nature of his house. When Hanasaki gets into his house, his butler begs him not to speak of the incident with his brother Haru, to the press following his dad's wishes, adding that he should not allow more problems to befall the Hanasaki family. After some days, Akechi and his team go on carrying out their normal duties, which is accepting jobs from clients with Kobayashi doing most of the impossible tasks in attempts to die. One evening, Hanasaki gets back 
back to Akechi's house to take his stuff that is still there. As Hanasaki tries to leave the house, Kobayashi and Inoue proceed out of the elevator. Seconds later, Kobayashi offers Hanasaki food, but he declines, stating that he does not need it. One thing leads to another, and Hanasaki makes some hurtful comments because he feels that he is not needed in the firm. Along the line, Akechi asks Hanasaki if it is okay to hurt someone else if he is hurt. After that, Hanasaki yells that he hates them, and then he runs out of the building in anger, charging into the streets of the city in the process. Along the line, he slips and falls, but still rains curses on Akechi. At this point, 20 Faces arrives at Hanasaki's position and agrees that Akechi is evil. Minutes into the meeting with 20 Faces, Hanasaki gets sprayed with a chemical that makes him pass out immediately. The following day, Inoue meets up with Otomo at school and finds out that Hanasaki has been ignoring Otomo's calls. Because of that, Otomo worries that something has happened to Hanasaki because Hanasaki always picks up when he calls him. During the meeting with Otomo, Inoue observes the new models of tools he makes, ranging from the camouflaging umbrella to the sleeping gas. Elsewhere, Hanasaki regains consciousness in 20 Faces' lair and gets fed with tea. Soon, he finds himself restrained to a chair, and he wonders where he is. Minutes later, a screen is displayed in front of Hanasaki that shows Haru, his brother lying unconscious on a hospital bed. Seeing Haru in his condition makes Hanasaki blame 20 Faces, adding that he is the cause of everything that happened earlier. Moving on, 20 Faces displays a dead girl on the screen who was due for a kidney transplant in the past. It turns out that she died in the past after Hanasaki exposed the activities of the organ harvesting facility, but 20 Faces tries to pin her death on him. After that, 20 Faces shows other children who passed away as a result of his involvement in exposing the facility in the past and this makes Hanasaki scream in the process. Later that afternoon, Akechi arrives in front of a haunted house and takes a job from a woman who has a daughter. Meanwhile, 20 Faces resumes his twisted session with Hanasaki and displays Hanasaki's father on the screen. Hanasaki's dad is a well-known businessman and entrepreneur who deals in manufacturing robots on a large scale. Elsewhere, as Akechi, Inoue, and Kobayashi gain access to the building, Inoue reveals info that he gathered on the building in the past and it turns out that the client wants them to catch a ghost. Meanwhile, Hanasaki's dad enters a press conference where he speaks about new models of robots heading for the market. However, as time goes on, a reporter present at the press conference asks Hanasaki's dad a question relating to his family, including Hanasaki. In response, Hanasaki's dad answers stating that his son is very busy with his school club, adding that he barely has time for him. Meanwhile, Hanasaki watches this on 20 Faces' screen, and 20 Faces condemns Hanasaki's father saying that all adults are liars. Following that, 20 Faces states that he was once like Hanasaki. At this point, he adds that Hanasaki only wants his dad and his boss to look at him differently so they can approve of his efforts and praise him. After making this statement, 20 Faces takes off a part of his garment and displays a bullet scar, adding that Akichi is responsible. Back in the haunted house, Kobayashi leads the way to find a potential ghost, and after some moments of creepiness, Akechi leaves the ghost hunt for Kobayashi and heads back to his car with Inoue. After Kobayashi is left alone in the building, he hears footsteps from a distance and looks in the direction of the sound. Back in the session with 20 Faces, Hanasaki sits strapped to a chair listening to 20 Faces speak about the fact that he was shot with a gun by Akechi in the past. After some seconds, 20 Faces reveals the gun he was shot with and adds that he was killed twice with the same gun. Soon, 20 Faces tells Hanasaki that Akechi is using him as a toy, adding that the only reason Akechi lives is for thrills. Next, Akechi and Inoue hear several explosions that occur in the building while they are outside. Inside the building, Kobayashi finds a person covered in white fabric who tries to run away from him. After some seconds of chasing the suspected ghost, the ghost jumps off a window and falls into Akechi's position. After Akechi takes off the white fabric from the ghost, he finds out that his client is pretending to be the ghost. Following that, Inoue assumes that the client wanted to use Akechi's name to make the headlines. Soon, the building collapses to the ground with Kobayashi still inside, and the case is declared solved. Back at 20 Faces' lair, Hanasaki holds a gun in his hand, pointing at a screen that displays Akechi in real time. Soon, Akechi gets into a conversation with Inoue, where he states that Kobayashi might be cut out to be a detective over Inoue. After that, he states that Hanasaki is not a detective, and this breaks Hanasaki's heart because watches Akechi on 20 Faces' big screen. In anger, Hanasaki points the gun at the screen and pulls the trigger multiple times. One thing leads to another, and 20 manages to set Hanasaki against Akechi. At sunset, Kobayashi breaks out of the debris of the collapsed building while Akechi prepares to leave. Seconds later, Inoue asks Akechi if he meant what he said about Hanasaki earlier, and in response, Akechi states that he meant what he said only then. The following day, 20 Faces sends a message to Akechi and Hanasaki's father, and they both believe that Hanasaki is held captive by 20 Faces. Meanwhile, Hanasaki agrees to fool his boss and his dad to make them think that he is in bondage at the time, but he isn't. The following day, Hanasaki and 20 Faces jump out of a large aircraft located close to space. Meanwhile, Akechi prepares his firearm so he can go and save 
Hanasaki from 20 Faces. It turns out that Akechi intends to go on the rescue mission alone, and Inoue considers it dangerous. Soon, Akechi leaves his house, stating that he has a plan, even as Inoue begs him not to go alone. Elsewhere, Hanasaki falls freely from the sky and moves close to 20 Faces, then triggers the parachute to land safely. Moving on, Noro tracks Hanasaki's movement via a tracking device that she placed on him in the past. Meanwhile, Hanasaki arrives at his dad's company with 20 Faces, and gets access to the building. Seconds after getting into the building, 20 Faces calls Hanasaki's dad over the phone and makes some requests. Because Hanasaki's dad thinks that his son is restrained by 20 Faces, he immediately fulfills 20 Faces' wishes by granting him access to the security room of the company's building. After getting access to the security room, 20 Faces demands for the security password over the phone, and Hanasaki's dad reveals it to him. Meanwhile, Hanasaki wonders why 20 Faces is doing what he is doing. Minutes later, Hanasaki assumes control of his father's company and locks down the entire building seconds after assuming control of the building. Meanwhile, Inoue drives the car on the road with Katsuda, Kobayashi, and Noro's owl, as they all follow Hanasaki's GPS location. While in search of Hanasaki, Inoue blames himself for Hanasaki's situation because he thinks that if he were closer to Hansaki that night, Hanasaki wouldn't have been captured by 20 faces. Although Inoue blames himself for Hanasaki's condition, Kobayashi does not agree with Inoue's perspective, and he tries to tell Inoue that what happened to Hansaki is not his fault, but he takes it too far. Minutes after tracking Hanasaki's GPS location, Inoue and the others arrive at a location, and they find out that 20 faces was aware that they were tracking Hanasaki because of the GPS. Back at Hanasaki's dad's company, Hanasaki activates the robots in the building and they all go after the remaining civilians and workers present in the building. Along the line, a lady gets trapped by a robot, but Akechi arrives just in time to prevent the robot from harming the lady. Seconds into the battle with the robot, Akechi receives heavy fire from the robot, but he manages to get to the robot and fire a shot inside the robot, hence destroying it in the process. Following that, Akechi makes a call out to the security security cameras present at the scene to inform 20 faces that he is there. As Hanasaki sets his eyes on Akechi through the security feed, he sends more robots to attack Akechi and Akechi takes cover in the process. Minutes later, Akechi moves out of cover and begins to fire countless shots at the robots with the aid of his assault rifle. Although Akechi is outnumbered by the robots, he manages to defeat a few of them and run away to reload and take cover. In an attempt to destroy most of the robots, Akechi detonates a bomb at the scene, but he loses his bag containing weapons in the process. Seconds after Akechi escapes the robots, he makes another call out with the intent to lure 20 faces to his position. Meanwhile, Hanasaki still watches Akechi through the security feed and assumes manual control of a robot. After assuming manual control of a robot present in the building, Akechi notices something off about the robot as he fights against it. Along the line, Akechi gets a bullet scratch on his hand, and he runs away to take cover. Meanwhile, Hanasaki is enjoying the feeling he gets as he attacks Akechi with the robot. However, Akechi surrenders after he notices that Hanasaki is in control of the robots. It turns out that he knows about Hanasaki's involvement because of the robot's fighting style and technique because he taught Hanasaki how to fight. Even after Akechi surrenders, Akechi says some words that provoke Hanasaki to launch mini-missiles at him. Amid the destruction, Akechi seizes the opportunity to arrive at Hanasaki's location using his tools to his advantage. After meeting with Hanasaki, Akechi offers to take Hansaki back, but Hansaki wonders how Akechi can be so forgiving even after what he has done. Minutes later, 20 Faces proceeds out of the dark and lands an attack on Hanasaki that forces him to the ground. After that, he aims a gun at Hanasaki and pulls the trigger. After the gunshot, Akechi looks shocked, but it turns out that 20 Faces did not shoot directly at Hanasaki. At this point, 20 Faces points a gun at Hanasaki and tells him that he is loved, yet he took advantage of the love and trampled it. As Hanasaki hears this, tears build up in his eyes, and after some time, Kobayashi arrives at the building with an angry look on his face. After Kobayashi gains access to the building, Inoue arrives behind him pissed about the fact that he acted on his own. After that, robots open fire at Kobayashi, but he takes no damage in the process. Meanwhile, 20 faces kicks Hanasaki in his abdomen and holds a gun to his face. While Inoue and Katsuda proceed into the building, they see civilians under threat from robots, and Inoue looks moved to help them, given the fact that there are 20 hostages. Elsewhere, Noro tries to convince Detective Nakamura over a call that something is going on in Hanasaki's dad's building. Even as she tries to convince Nakamura, she fails because Nakamura Nakamura thinks that the building does not need police intervention. Moving on, Kobayashi encounters fire from more robots, but he destroys them while searching for Hanasaki. Along the line, he gets tired and stops running, but a robot fours a bullet that manages to take a slice off Kobayashi's hair. Just below Kobayashi, Inoue and Katsuda attack the robots holding the civilians hostage. While at it, they manage to defeat a bunch of robots and tell the civilians to make a run for their lives. Meanwhile, Kobayashi arrives at Hanasaki's position panting as a result of running for a long period. 
period. When Hanasaki sees Kobayashi, he looks shocked, but Kobayashi proceeds to meet Hanasaki to speak to him about his stupid behavior. Along the line, Twentu Faces, who is directly behind Kobayashi, fires warning shots at Hanasaki with the intent to intimidate Hanasaki into considering death. Seconds later, the robots begin to act weird and leave the building and it looks as if they are under someone else's control. At first, Akechi assumes that it is Noro who hacked into the robot system, but it is Otomo who did all the hacking with the aid of his drones. After that, Noro triggers the robot to explode to attract the attention of the police. After the explosion, Akechi seizes the opportunity to snatch the gun from Twenty Faces' hands and points it at him, telling him that it is over. Meanwhile, Twenty Faces looks confident for some reason and tells Akechi that nothing is over. Just Below Akechi's position, the civilians trapped in the building point assault rifles at Katsuda and Inoue while Otomo's signal gets jammed mysteriously. Because of the actions of the civilians, Akechi gets curious and asks Twenty Faces if he brainwashed the civilians. In response, Twenty Faces reveals that the civilians are under orders from him to kill any intruder who gains access to the building after the robots are gone. Seconds after Twenty Faces' response, Akechi looks pissed, but Twenty Faces adds that Hanasaki dies, and in exchange, he will stop the civilians in the building from attacking anyone. At this point, Twenty Faces tries to set Hanasaki's life against others, thus putting Akechi in a tight position. Soon, Hanasaki steps in front of Akechi, who has a gun pointing at Twenty Faces begging for death. He begs to die because he believes that everything that happens is his fault, and Twenty Faces gives off a weird smile as Hanasaki begs Akechi to kill him. Afterward, Twenty Faces tries to make Hanasaki feel bad for his actions as he makes him remember what his dad did for him in the past. It turns out that Twenty Faces' plan is working at this point because Hanasaki falls on his knees with tears dropping from his eyes begging for death. Even as Hanasaki wishes for death, Kobayashi interrupts him, stating that Hanasaki should not wish to die. Meanwhile, Twenty Faces derives satisfaction and pleasure from Akechi's look on his face. However, Hanasaki's wish for death grows more intense till he gets a sharp glass piece and holds it to his throat. After that, he jumps off a high pavement heading to the ground and Kobayashi jumps after him to save him from falling to his death. In midair, Kobayashi tries to hold Hanasaki's hand but he fails because does not reach him in time. Following that, Hanasaki lands in a pool of water and manages to swim to the top. After that, Kobayashi drops a chemical in the water that induces sleep, and all civilians present in the building, including Hanasaki, Niue, and Katsuda, fall asleep. Even as Aki covers his nose with his hand, he falls to the ground with his gun after seconds of exposure to the gas, and Twenty Faces walks away from him. Just before Twenty Faces leaves the building, he has a final conversation with Kobayashi, where he reveals his intentions to play with him again in the future. Minutes later, the police arrive alongside the ambulance, and they take Akechi and some other civilians out of the building. It turns out that the police have captured 20 faces, or at least someone dressed as him. Meters away from the building, Hanasaki sits alone, and he sees Kobayashi from a distance, and chases after him. When Hanasaki arrives at Kobayashi's position, Kobayashi tells him to keep his promise, and kill him. A month after the incident at Hanasaki's dad's company, a civilian sprays graffiti on a wall, and a crack open in the ground. Since it is nighttime, the civilian looks scared, but Kobayashi comes out of the ground after some seconds, and apprehends the civilian. Minutes later, the police arrive and arrest the culprit, and it turns out that he used to paint horrifying images on church walls. The following day, Hansaki rounds up his therapy session with his therapist as he receives a call from his dad. Soon, he heads out of the therapist's office in school and proceeds to speak with his dad over the phone. Elsewhere, Inoue receives a job from a client, and after his meeting with the client, Miyanishi, Nakamura's colleague arrives at Akechi's house to seek an audience with him. During Miyanishi's meeting with Inoue, he speaks of Lynch Shot, a site that is being used to upload spy photos of all types of famous people. Also, so Miyanishi reveals that the photos were taken extremely close to the targets, without the targets even noticing. At this point, Inoue wonders why the person taking the photos never gets caught. Minutes later, Miyanishi reveals an absurd reason for taking the case, and he begs Inoue to help solve it. Before Miyanishi leaves the building, he asks Inoue if he has heard from Akechi, but Inoue replies saying no. Meanwhile, Kobayashi is on the roof of the building pissed after a failed trial of killing him slept. Later that evening, Inoue heads out with Katsuda and Kobayashi in a car to investigate two cases, one of which involves the mysterious spy. While on the road, Noro is on a call with Inoue, and she reveals that she will track the phones of the spies who take pictures of people before they can dispose of it so she can give Inoue an advantage in finding the culprits. After some time, 
Inoue stops Kobayashi at a specific location, and Kobayashi heads out of the car. While in school, Otomo invites Hanasaki to come and visit him in his lab, while Yamane, Hanasaki's classmate, speaks of Otomo's new inventions to lure Hanasaki to visit the lab. However, Otomo assumes that Hanasaki is not coming to the lab after some time of waiting at the lab. Soon, Otomo enters into a conversation with Yamane where he reveals that he has not forgiven Hanasaki for what he did in the past. Elsewhere, Hanasaki bumps into Kobayashi while walking out of his school building. On meeting Hanasaki, Kobayashi asks Hanasaki to come with him and they both move to a place where Kobayashi reveals that he is investigating an affair. During Hanasaki's time with Kobayashi, a call comes in for Hanasai from his dad and after he answers it, he reveals that he has to go. Just when Hanasaki is about to leave Kobayashi's presence, he experiences a strong feeling in his chest that attracts Kobayashi's attention. Meanwhile, Hanasaki emphasizes that he is fine and he leaves the scene immediately. Minutes later, Hanasaki arrives at home and observes dinner with his father. During dinner, Hanasaki's dad dad reveals to Hanasaki that he had some spare time and thought of spending it with him over dinner. After dinner, Hanasaki retires to his bed, and something looks to be bothering him, as he looks at his mobile device. Moving on, Noro detects that Lynch's shot has been updated, she passes the info to Inoue and the others. It turns out that it is a picture of Kobayashi when he was trying to apprehend the culprit from earlier. The following day, Inoue tells Kobayashi to lay low for a while because his face is all over the internet, and he does not want the public to find out about his powers. Later that day, Hanasaki sits beside a pool in his house, and aims a boomerang for the sky. Minutes later, Kobayashi arrives and takes him to the place where his picture was taken. It turns out that Kobayashi wants to solve his case, and he tells Hanasaki to take the case seriously. Minutes after getting to the crime scene, where a culprit was arrested for painting graffiti earlier, Hanasaki quickly makes some observations and notices that Kobayashi should have seen the person who took his picture because how how close the shot was. Soon, Hanasaki calls the spy the Invisible Man and continues to inspect the crime scene. Later that day, while Kobayashi observes lunch, Hanasaki asks Kobayashi if he can forgive him for what he did in the past with 20 faces. Given the fact that Kobayashi has little or no regard for emotions, he emphasizes that he does not care about what Hanasaki did. Rather, he makes a joke that Hanasaki should kill him if he has time to speak of absurd things like that. After some time, a video of Kobayashi goes viral, and it looks as if Kobayashi has a hand in leaking it. Later that evening, Hanasaki is present at a spot with Kobayashi after Hanasaki tries to lure the spies to their location with the video he uploaded earlier. Meanwhile, two guys arrive just outside Hanasaki's location so they can take pictures or videos of Kobayashi and upload them to their website. After some time, one of the guys dresses in a costume that masks his presence, making him invincible, and he gains access to the building and sees Kobayashi standing alone displaying the effects of his powers. After the man manages to get some images of Kobayashi in action, he updates his colleague over the phone and tries to leave the building. Meanwhile, Hanasaki, who laid a trap for the spy, catches him and takes off his mask. Hanasaki was able to see the spy because of a fluorescent paint shower that was sprayed at the scene while Kobayashi was performing. After catching the guy, his colleague tries to escape with a bike, but the police arrive just in time to prevent him from doing so. After the case is solved, Kobayashi tells Hanasaki to keep up with his investigative work so he can kill him in the process. Seconds later, Inoue arrives at the scene with a car and tells Kobayashi to get in leaving Hanasaki all by himself. At this point, Hanasaki realizes that solving just one case will not be enough to settle things with Inoue and the others because he gets left out when Inoue asks Kobayashi to enter the car. Minutes later, Hanasaki heads out alone to the streets and puts his mobile device in his pocket. Yamane Tasuku is an ordinary student who attends the same high school as Hanaaki and Inoue. Yamane often gets picked on in school by Otomo, who sets absurd traps for him although they have a good relationship with themselves. One day, a female student arrives at Yamane's location in school and assumes that he is in the boy detectives club. Soon, both students arrive at Otomo's lab, and Yamane offers her something to drink. Minutes into the meeting with the female student, the female student speaks of Ruragaku boys, a data bank of all the hot guys in their school. After she explains the contents of the database, she adds that things belonging to the students enlisted in the database are going missing. Seconds after she makes this revelation, she asks Yamane to help catch the thief because the school teachers and guards are not doing anything about the ongoing thefts. It turns out that the girl's true intention is is to prevent Inoue's stuff from going missing, and after she reveals this to Yamae and Otomo, she begs them to keep it a secret. Minutes after the meeting with the girl, Yamane manages to convince Otomo to join him and solve the case, and they both head to Noro's apartment to see her. At the entrance of Noro's apartment, Yamane introduces himself to Noro and offers her some snacks for lunch. Minutes later, Yamane and Otomo are in Noro's apartment, and Noro agrees to help them because she wants Inoue to see how useful she is, given the fact that for some reason, Inoue only has 
has nice words for Kobayashi. Moving on, Noro hacks into the school security system, and Otomo reveals that the security cameras in the school are old, adding that they might not have internet connection. As a result, Noro reveals that they will have to access the data remotely from the school. Hours later, Yamane arrives at the school and gives Noro access to the school security footage. After Noro gets access to the footage, she finds out that the video quality is low, and she makes a nasty comment about the security cameras. Elsewhere, Hanasaki runs away from the hospital after a nurse sees him trying to get access to Haru, who is sleeping on a hospital bed. Back in school, Noro speaks to Yamane using her owl, and she reveals that it will take a while to analyze the security footage. Minutes later, they both enter into a conversation where Noro reveals that she was scouted by Akechi to become a detective, adding that she is done with school completely. While speaking to Noro, Yamane walks to a point and sees a guard running off with Otomo's lab coat. Meanwhile, Hanasaki meets up with Kobayashi at a spot after kissing lots of calls from him. There, Kobayashi tells Hanasaki to hurry up and kill him. But after Hansaki hears this, he runs away from Kobayashi telling him not to follow him. Furthermore, Yamane runs as fast as he can to catch the person who stole Otomo's lab coat. While at it, Noro tries to teach Yamane how to direct the owl, but her plan fails as Yamane falls to the ground. Meanwhile, Kobayashi chases after Hanasaki, pissed about the fact that Hanasaki dragged him into detective work under the promise that he will find a way to kill him. After some time, Hansaki runs away after saying that he cannot be the person he was in the past. Back in school, Yamane is disappointed in himself because he cannot catch the person responsible for stealing Otomo's lab coat. Soon, Noro tries to cheer him up, and then he reveals that he would like to join the club, but adds that he is not good enough. Minutes later, the conversation with Noro comes to an end, and the owl flies away after Noro tells Yamane to go home. Hours later, a guard enters into the locker room and tries to open Inoue's locker. After he opens the locker, he sees Yamane inside, who shoots a slimy liquid at him from a water gun. It turns out that Yamane has managed to find the thief, but the guard claims that Yamane has no proof. One thing leads to another, and Yamane manages to lure the owl to his position so that Noro can see the guard. The following day, the girl from the previous day appreciates Yamane for helping her solve the case. Soon, Inoue arrives at Otomo's lab, and he realizes that Yanmane is the one responsible for solving the case. After that, Yamane reveals that he would like to join the boy detectives club, and Inoue accepts. Then Yamane gets his mobile device marking his membership into the cub. Later that day, Kobayashi displays an appetite, and he eats a bunch of apples in Akechi's house. Minutes later, a call comes in, and Kobayashi takes it, and realizes that it is his boss, Akechi. During the call with Kobayashi, Akechi, who is at an airport, asks to know what Kobayashi is doing. Minutes later, Kobayashi reveals that Hanasaki is acting weird, and he asks Akechi what he should do about him. Soon, the conversation with Akechi comes to an end, and Kobayashi thinks about what he should do concerning Hansaki's situation. Later that day, Detective Nakamura and Officer Miyanishi meet with Inoue, saying that they will escort Fukia Seiji, a prisoner, through some specific locations displayed on the map. Because Fukia Seiji is to testify in court about a crime that took place earlier, his life is in danger as people will try to take the advantage and kill him before he can get to court. Along the line, Nakamura reveals that she wants Inoue and his team to guard Fukia, adding that it was Fukia's request. It turns out that Fukia agreed to testify in court only if Akechi's investigation firm is guarding him. Minutes later, Kobayashi agrees to the case, making Inoue take the case in the process. Just outside the building, Kobayashi takes out his mobile device and drops a message for Hanasaki regarding their next mission. Meanwhile, Hansaki deletes the message from his phone after listening to it. Elsewhere, Fukia is escorted in a van while Noro monitors the movement of the van from her computer in her apartment. So far, she notices everything is going smoothly while other cars complete the convoy from behind the van carrying Fukia. While in the van, Kobayashi tries to call Hanasaki multiple times, but he does pick up. Fukia, who sits across from Kobayashi, notices this and states that the person Kobayashi is calling has a reason for not taking the call. Even as Detective Nakamura tells Fukia to be quiet, he asks if the people trying to kill him have been caught and then guesses the number of cars in the convoy. Elsewhere, Hanasaki walks along the streets of the city and notices some people throwing trash into the sea. Along the line, the guys pick on Hanasaki and push him to the ground but as they head back to their truck, they see it full of thrash. It turns out that another guy named Hyde saw what the guys did earlier and filled their trick with trash. Soon, Hansaki introduces himself to Hyde, and they both share a good laugh after Hanasaki finds out that Hyde is the one responsible for the trash in the truck. While in the van with Fukia, Kobayashi tries to call Hansaki a few more times, but he fails as the call does not go through. After that, Fukia for some reason looks fascinated about Kobayashi and intends to know more about him. Soon, Fukia begins to tell a story about his deeds in the past, 
stating that he was obsessed with the fluctuations of the mind when he was young and became a psychiatrist as a result. In addition, Fukia reveals that he was not satisfied with his observations as a psychiatrist, adding that he moved on to satisfy his curiosity and ended up killing a 14-year-old girl in the process. At this point, Detective Nakamura is irritated by Fukia's words, and she tells him to stop talking. Even though Fukia is meant to be quiet, he goes on to ask Kobayashi to reveal some info about himself defying Nakamura's orders in the process. Seconds later, Kobayashi remains silent, and Fukia suggests that they both play a game of words where he will reveal a word, and Kobayashi will say the first thing on his mind when he hears the word. Meanwhile, Hyde takes Hansaki to his hideout after some minutes of persuasion. On getting there, Hyde introduces Hanasaki to Furukawa, a blonde-haired guy living there. Furthermore, Furukawa tells Hansaki that the people that live there have screwed up somehow in life and dropped out of normal society, adding that those are the only kind of people that Hyde picks up. Soon, Hyde arrives with lunch and offers it to Hansaki, and it turns out that it wasn't what he was expecting. While en route to the court, Noro discovers that the driver of the van made a wrong turn and calls the attention of Inoue. When Inoue tries to call the attention of the driver, the driver does not answer him. Rather, he steps on the pedal and speeds up. Because of the current situation in the van, Detective Nakamura calls Officer Miyanishi, who is driving in a black car just behind them. It turns out that Detective Nakamura wants Miyanishi to try and stop the van, but as he tries to speed up and stop the van, the other two black cars driving beside him hit his car in a way that stops him from moving. Minutes later, Kobayashi tells uses his powers to crash the van, and after the crash, the other two black cars arrive at Inoue's location asking to take Fukia. As Detective Nakamura insists on maintaining custody of Fukia, one of the men points a gun to her head and threatens her life. Along the line, Kobayashi assumes a defensive position as he thales fire from the men, while Inoue and the others take cover at the back of the van. Seconds later, one of the men present at the scene calls Furukawa, who is with Hanasaki at the time, and after the call, Furukawa reveals that they are switching to Plan B. Meanwhile, Hanasaki has no idea of what is going on at the time. Moving on, Detective Nakamura suggests that they change their position, but Fukia declines to move because Kobayashi refuses to play a game with him. Because of what is at stake, Kobayashi agrees to play Fukia's game so that they can all move to a secure location. Later that afternoon, Hyde and his team carry their firearms and put on their bulletproof vest, preparing to head out, while Hansaki sits out on a table and watches what goes on in the news. It is at this point that Hansaki discovers that Inoue and the others are in danger. Also, Detective Nakamura and the others arrive at a building and proceed upstairs to escape danger. While at it, Kobayashi plays Fukia's game of words and at a point, Fukia says a word that triggers Kobayashi's memories. After some time, more men dressed in black arrive in trucks and proceed into the building to find Fukia. Minutes later, Detective Nakamura asks Noro to send a chopper for them after she discovers that more men are after them. While in the building, Kobayashi and the others move quickly upstairs, and while at it, Fukia says another word that triggers Kobayashi's memories, but this time he remembers more clearly. Elsewhere, Hyde puts a bulletproof vest on Hanasaki while he is watching the news on the TV, and as a result, Hansakai turns his back and sees Hyde and the others with bulletproof vests and guns. Following that, Hyde reveals his intentions to Hansaki, which is to abduct Fukia, and even as Hansaki disagrees, he gets taken to a bus against his will, and they all set out on a mission. While on the bus, Hyde reveals that the parents of the girl Fukia killed in the past asked them to abduct Fukia. After Hanasaki receives this info, he tells Hyde that his friends are the ones escorting Fukia. At this point, Hansaki is put in a difficult position because he has to choose between Hyde and his friends. Moving on, Kobayashi, Inoue, and the others proceed up the stairs to find an exit to the roof. On getting to a certain point, they all find out that the passage has been destroyed and they try to take an alternative route to leave the building. While at it, some men arrive close to their location and fire countless shots at them. Along the line, Fukia, for some strange reason, realizes that the parents of Arisu, the girl he killed in the past, are among the men attacking them and calls them out. After that, Fukia leans on the rails and mocks Arisu's parents, making them fire shots at Fukia in the process. Because of Fukia's hurtful words, Arius's parents fume up in rage and move quickly up the stairs so they can kill Fukia. Following that, Detective Nakamura manages to slow Arisu's parents down by using a fire extinguisher to block the sight of Arisu's parents. Although Inoue and the others are running for their lives, Fukia still plays his word game with Kobayashi and manages to trigger memories of Kobayashi with some specific words. As a result, Kobayashi begins to breathe heavily as he remembers some things that occurred in the past. Afterward, Fukia and the others arrive at a spot in the building, but Kobayashi falls to his knees at some point and begins to see flashes of his past, thus making Inoue and the others halt in the process. Minutes later, Arisu 
Yasu's parents and the other armed men arrive at Fukia's position and point guns at Detective Nakamura demanding that she realize Fukia to them. At this point, Kobayashi steps forward just in front of Fukia and tells the men to shoot him. Because Arisa's mom is provoked, he aims her weapons at Kobayashi and pulls the trigger. To her surprise, the bullet gets deflected by Kobayashi's powers and she looks shocked. Also, the other men dressed in black look shocked at Kobayashi's powers and open fire at him hoping to neutralize him. Elsewhere, Hanasaki sits across Haide in a van and tells him that he will have to go after his friends. Even as Hanasaki chooses to side with his friends, Haide gives him a 100 second window to run away from the van before he proceeds to attack him. Following that, Hanasaki seizes the opportunity to escape the van and head off to meet Kobayashi and the others. Back in the building, Arisu's mom intends to detonate a bomb at the scene because her plan to abduct Fukia is not working. Fukia notices that there is a bomb in play and then suggests to offer him Slef up so that Nakamura and her friends will live. Along the line, Arisu's mom holds a bomb trigger with her hands and tries to blow the whole place up, but Akechi arrives just in time and prevents the woman from triggering the bomb. Seconds later, Akechi fires some shots at the men and manages to take the bomb's trigger from Arisu's mom. Because of Akechi's presence, Fukia can make it to the chopper. But just as Fukia is about to enter the chopper, he delivers a strange message to Akechi from 20 faces. As Fukia takes off in the chopper, he gets killed after some minutes by a guard working alongside Arisu's parents. Meanwhile, Hansaki arrives at the building and finds out that he is late as the case is over. Along the line, Arasu's mom heads out of the shadows with her gun and pulls the trigger at Hanasaki. In split seconds, Kobayashi dives in the direction of the bullet and takes the shot for Hanasaki, preventing him from imminent death. After taking the shot for Hanasaki, Kobayashi bleeds on the floor in pain, leaving Hanasaki and the others shocked. Seconds after taking a bullet for Hanasaki, Kobayashi screams in pain and falls to the ground as he fights for his life. Following that, Hanasaki tries to touch Kobayashi, but he gets repelled by the force field around Kobayashi's body, while Detective Nakamura chases after Arisu's mom, who tries to flee the scene. At this point, Hanasaki feels bad for Kobayashi because of his condition, and wonders why he took a bullet for him. Following that, Akechi drops a stone on Kobayashi and finds out that Kobayashi's power is growing weaker. Because Kobayashi's ability to prevent death stems from his desire to die, Inoue assumes that Kobayashi does not want to die. Akechi also confirms Inoue's deductions and states that Kobayashi wants to live, adding that Kobayashi must have enjoyed his time with Hanasaki. As Hanasaki hears this, he becomes so and assumes Kobayashi's condition is unfair. Minutes later, Akechi suggests Kobayashi can be saved if there is a way to make him want to die. After Akechi makes the suggestion, he walks out on Hanasaki and tells him not to follow him around, adding that the boy detectives club is breaking up. As Noro hears this, she feels bad while Inoue looks somewhat enraged by Akechi's statement. Moving on, Detective Nakamura catches up to Arisu's mom and points a gun at her. Soon, Hyde arrives at the scene, shoots Nakamura's gun off her hand, and takes Arisu's mom away with him. As Detective Nakamura tries to follow Hyde, a flashbang grenade explodes close to her, disorientating her balance in the process. Back at Kobayashi's position, Noro, who is pissed at the time, asks Inoue why he did not say anything about the breakup earlier, because he was aware of it before then. Following that, Inoue responds, stating that he will talk about it later, but Noro does not look satisfied with Inoue's response. Soon, Inoue manages to get up from his wheelchair and find a way to lift Kobayashi off the ground without coming in contact with the force field. Hanasaki then joins Inoue to lift Kobayashi off the ground and place him in Inoue's wheelchair. Just outside the building, lots of police cars are parked while Officer Miyanishi meets up with Nakamura from the hospital. Minutes later, Detective Nakamura's boss, who is pissed at the time, demands an audience with Detective Nakamura. Back in the building, Inoue suggests that they carry Kobayashi out of the building in a way that the police officers will not see him. Along the line, Miyanishi arrives at the scene and joins in carrying Kobayashi down the stairs in Inoue's wheelchair. However, Nakamura's boss expresses disappointment at Nakamura because of how poorly she handled her assigned task. They both engage in a heated conversation where Nakamura's boss reveals that the reputation of and the police has been ruined, adding that she is not the only one who will take responsibility for her failure. Moving on, Hanasaki arrives at a van just behind the building and manages to put Kobayashi inside the vehicle with Miyanishi's help. Following that, Inoue drives off and arrives at the office. At the office, Hanasaki pours a chemical on Kobayashi's wound to prevent it from getting infected, and after that, he tries to give Kobayashi a medicine that will make him feel better, but fails in the process. Seeing Kobayashi's condition makes Hanasaki break down emotionally, and he thinks of a way to save Kobayashi his life. Minutes later, Hyde arrives at the building intending to leave with Hanasaki. When Hyde sees Kobayashi's condition, he freaks out and asks Hanasaki a question about Kobayashi repelling bullets. As a result of Hyde's question, Inoue looks shocked and after some time, 
He realizes that Hyde was part of the people who wanted Fukia dead. Following that, Inoue gets furious when Hyde confirms his involvement in the Fukia mission, and asks Hansaki why he didn't say anything about it. Also, Inoue assumes that Hanasaki is hiding something, but even as Hanasaki tries to explain himself, Inoue interrupts him stating that Hanasaki should give his excuses to Kobayashi and not him. Along the line, Hyde states that Hanasaki is now with his team, and as a result, Inoue assumes that Hanasaki has made new friends quickly. However, Hanasaki leaves the building with Hyde after emphasizing that Inoue and the others have changed. Meanwhile, Kobayashi hears everything that goes down between Hanasaki and Inoue, then weeps momentarily and closes his eyes. Furthermore, Inoue sits in silence and remembers what Akechi said in the past concerning the club breaking up, wishing that Akechi never said it at all. Seconds after Hanasaki departs the office, Inoue observes something strange about Kobayashi, as he observes the bullet inside Kobayashi's abdomen come out on its own and fall to the ground. After some days, Akechi lies on a couch and remembers a time when he shot his girlfriend in the past. Soon he sees a crucified figure of 20 faces addressing him as the best kind of evil. Following that, he sits on a chair and holds a map with a marked inscription of a triangle covering the place he has been in the past. Sometime in the past, Akechi's girlfriend, the girl he saved in the past, was present at a camp where Fumio introduced herself as a reporter. One day, while Akechi was taking heavy fire from enemies, Fumio would use her camera to take pictures of the fight scene while Akechi would stare at her. At a point, Fumio and Akechi were seen together, and Akechi was attracted to how normal she was at that time. Back in the present, Kobayashi is in a bad condition as he lies on a couch in the office with a fever. When Katsuda finds out that Kobayashi has been in that condition for five days, he looks shocked, while Otomo reveals that the club is breaking up. Yamane, who recently got into the club, looks sad while Otomo speaks of how shady Akechi's life is. Along the line, Kobayashi's force field drags all the food present in the room into Kobayashi's mouth while everyone present in the office looks stunned. Noro, who watches using her owl as aid, quickly assumes that Kobayashi's power is absorbing nutrients in desperation to live. Years in the past, when Fumio was to leave the camp where Akechi and his girlfriend were, Akechi and his girlfriend had a brief discussion about their future, where Akechi revealed that he does not want Fumio to become the people that they are. The following day, when it was time for Fumio to leave, Akechi gave her some flowers, but she had tears rolling down her eyes at that time. After some time, Akechi's girlfriend runs towards Fumio and kisses her goodbye. Seconds later, Akechi's girlfriend says goodbye to Akechi, adding that she cannot satisfy him anymore. Sometime in the past, Akechi received a woman to his bar. At this time, Akechi just newly launched his investigative club, and the woman was his first client. Because the woman was his first client, he did not charge her, and it turned out that Fumio, who was present at the time, gave him the idea. One day, Akechi picks up a newspaper where he sees an inscription, the fiend with 20 faces appears. Later that evening, a civilian tries to move out of a train, but just when he leaves the train, a bomb detonates behind him, pushing him to the ground. Akechi, who watches the video, receives info from Namakoshi, a police officer seated beside him, that 20 faces is involved in the explosion, adding that they need to catch 20 faces as soon as possible. After that, Akechi accepts a job from Namakoshi to investigate and nab 20 faces, so he does not cause more harm in the city. Days later, he receives a letter from Namakoshi sent from 20 faces, and after he reads the contents of the letter, he realizes that Fumio is in danger, and tells Namakoshi to try her cell phone. While Akechi proceeds to find Fumio, he gets a flashback of when he decided to leave with Fumio in the past. After some seconds of walking along an underground pathway, he receives a call, but just when he is about to answer his phone, he hears 20 Faces' voice from the shadows. At this point, Akechi recalls when he left his girlfriend behind, and set out with Fumio heading for the city. At that time, the truck they used to travel crashes, and after Akechi wakes up, he realizes that Fumio is gone. Seconds after looking for Fumio, Akechi's girlfriend arrives in a car, and when she gets out of the car, she states that she heard Akechi's vehicle was found. However, after a few seconds, Akechi pushes his girlfriend backward and points a gun at her stating that she smells of the flowers he gave Fumio earlier. Back in the underground passage, Akechi realizes that his girlfriend is 20 faces, and Fumio was with him the whole time standing at his back. When Akechi sees Fumio, he asks 20 faces what he did to her and then 20 faces reveals that he charmed Fumio, adding that his lips charm people. Soon, 20 fades into the shadows after telling Akechi to ask Fumio who is behind the explosions. Also, Fumio holds a bomb trigger while Akechi has a sad look on his face. At this point, Fumio is brainwashed by 20 faces, and she tries to trigger the bomb with the controller she holds with her hands. Soon, Akechi runs towards her to prevent her from detonating the bomb. In the past, Akechi pulled the trigger on his girlfriend, aka 20 faces, after discovering he was responsible for Fumio's absence. Back in real time, Akechi gets up from his sofa and reflects on his past actions. Along the line, he assaults a civilian in the streets because he thinks the civilian is 20 faces. The following day, 
Kobayashi wakes up from sleep after having a dream about his past, where his mother lies sick on a hospital bed. Even after Kobayashi wakes up, objects trigger his memories, and he begins to remember how badly his father treated him because of his mother's ill condition. Later that morning, Hyde and his friend Furukawa dress as workers from a renovation company and arrive at the Hanasaki residence to see Hanasaki. Minutes later, Hyde and Furukawa gain access to Hanasaki's room where they both realize that Hansaki is a rich kid. It turns out that Hyde is present in Hansaki's house because Hanasaki for some reason has not been answering his calls. Soon a conversation begins between Hanasaki and Hyde, where Hyde reveals that he caught a man littering an environment with cigarettes, and because of that, he did some damage to that man's house the previous day. After some time, Hyde tells Hanasaki to join him on their next mission. The next mission features a guy who goes to trending restaurants and posts fake reports of the restaurants online. One fake report that Furukawa shows to Hansaki displays a cockroach inside a meal, and then Hyde explains that they cannot let things like that slide. Even as Hyde tries to convince Hansasaki to join him, Hanasaki declines stating that he is not one of them, and as a result, Haide leaves with Furukawa shortly. Back in school, Yamane meets and Otomo meets up with Katsuta, who is at the school library studying. Seconds after meeting Katsuta, Yamane asks if Katasuka has seen Inoue, and he replies saying no. Based on Katsuta's reply, Yamane assumes that Inoue is still taking care of Kobayashi, but Otomo thinks that Inoue is bored because the club broke up. Later that day, Inoue engages in a conversation with Detective Nakamura and Officer Miyanishi on the office's rooftop, where Nakamura reveals that she is being transferred to the Special Security Division. After Nakamura makes this revelation, Inoue assumes that Nakamura was forced to take responsibility for what happened to Fukia in the past, but Nakamura does not see it that way. Still in the conversation, Nakamura reveals that Fukia was connected to 20 faces because of testimonies of people who saw 20 faces in Fukia making contact within the prison. Soon, the conversation with Nakamura comes to an end, as she tells Inoue that she will not be able to clean after the club, then she leaves in the process. Back in the office, Kobayashi tries to get something from the fridge, but gets flashes of his memories in the process. Subsequently, Kobayashi holds his head in pain, but after some seconds, Hanasaki arrives at the office. Following that, Hanasaki Hanasaki feels bad for Kobayashi's condition and assumes that everything that happened is his fault, emphasizing that he dragged Kobayashi into the mess. Minutes later, Inoue arrives at the office and looks pissed when he sees Hanasaki in the building. After Inoue assumes his position at the table, Hansaki asks for the whereabouts of Akechi, but Inoue declines to answer. Because of Inoue's attitude to Hanasaki, Hansaki gets up and approaches the door to take his leave. Just before Hanasaki reaches the door, Kobayashi seems in pain, and because of that, Hanasaki stays behind. At this point, Kobayashi yells as he gets several flashbacks of his memories and pieces. In the past, Kobayashi's father slams Kobayashi's head on a wall, leaving Kobayashi lying in pain. In the present, Inoue uses clues from Kobayashi's dream to pinpoint a location on a map that fits the description of Kobayashi's memories. Minutes later, Kobayashi, who is all messed up in the head, proceeds out of the building after he confirms the location of the place he saw in his flashbacks. Inoue, who looks concerned, gives Kobayashi a lift, but Hanasaki declines to enter Inoue's car for some reason. While driving on the road, Noro speaks to Inoue through her owl and tells him to open the car windows to let the bird out. After Pipo, the owl flies out of the car, flies over to Hanasaki's location, and attacks him for some minutes following Noro's wishes. After some time, Hanasaki gets fed up, but Noro says something about Hanasaki's recent behavior. Before Pipo flies away, Noro advises Hanasaki that he should act more simply, adding that being complex does not suit him. Hours later, the man responsible for leaking fake reports of restaurants online smiles as he manages to make people refuse to eat at the affected restaurants. Along the line, his happiness is short-lived because he gets exposed as a video validating his evil actions goes online. It turns out that Hyde and Furukawa are responsible for exposing the man as they are seen smiling from a distance. Minutes later, Hyde receives a call from Hanasaki, and after some time, Hyde arrives at Hanasaki's location with his van and gives Hanasaki a lift heading to Kobayashi's location. Meanwhile, a masked man tries to escape prison and a guard catches up with him. When the masked man takes off his mask, he reveals himself as 20 faces. Subsequently, Kobayashi wakes up from sleep in Inoue's car after having a sad dream about his mother. Seconds after Kobayashi wakes up, he realizes that he is in the exact location he saw in his memories earlier, which is an amusement park. Following that, Kobayashi sits in the car and holds his head while getting flashbacks of his memories in pieces. Meanwhile, Inoue observes Kobayashi's condition and wonders what is wrong with him. Minutes later, Hanasaki arrives at the scene with Haide and Furukawa to help Kobayashi with his memories. Elsewhere, a meeting amongst Officer Miyanishi's superiors places Akechi as 20 faces after they watch security footage of the prison displayed on a big screen. Even as Miyanishi's superiors place Akechi as 20 faces, Miyanishi who is present in the meeting disagrees with the conclusion and states that the person 
absent in the footage is 20 faces in disguise. All attempts made by Miyanishi to convince his superiors fail as his superior reveals that he will punish Detective Nakamura for her actions. After the meeting, a colleague advises Officer Miyanishi to be careful because his superiors are trying to push the whole blame on Nakamura. Minutes later, Miyanishi tries to call Detective Nakamura, but she does not pick up her phone then. After that, Miyanishi tries Akechi's phone, but it does not connect at all. While at the amusement park, Kobayashi's memories get triggered when he sees some specific objects present at the site. Along the line, Kobayashi arrives at a spot that reminds him of his abusive father. As Kobayashi walks along the path ahead of him, Inoue and the others present at the scene follow him, and after some time, Kobayashi falls to the ground and points his hand in a specific direction. Elsewhere, Miyanishi visits Haru's mom in prison to get clarification about 20 Faces' identity by displaying Akechi's picture. Soon, his time expires in the visitor's room, and the guard informs him. At sunset, Inoue, Hanasaki, and the others arrive at a house, and it turns out that it is the same house that Kobayashi used to live in years back. Based on a journal present in the house, Inoue learns that Kobayashi's father treated his wife himself in the house. Also, Inoue finds out that Kobayashi's mother suffered from aggressive autoimmune disorder, a lethal disease that has no cure. Further analysis by Inoue shows that Kobayashi's mother's life was shortened from having a baby. Minutes later, Furukawa speaks of the man they exposed earlier, and as a result, Inoue gets into a heated conversation with Hide and Furukawa because they all share different views on justice. Meanwhile, as Miyazaki Anishi walks on the road, he assumes that his superiors are hiding something from him, and he proceeds to meet a woman who watches Nakan, her daughter, play at a spot. When Nakan's mother sees Officer Miyanishi approaching her, she tries to leave with her daughter, but Miyanishi tries to converse with her. It turns out that the woman is the wife of the Deputy Commissioner of Police, and his daughter recently had a heart transplant. Back at the amusement park, Inoue reveals a video of Ayusawa the man that Hyde exposed earlier, to Hanasaki and the others. It turns out that Ayusawa intends to commit suicide, and from the contents of the video, Inoue deduces that Ayusawa is close to their location. At this point, Hyde and Furukawa are not bothered by Ayusawa's suicide attempt because they believe that he got what he deserved. Soon, Hyde and Furukawa leave that scene after Hanasaki declines to follow them on their next mission. After Miyanishi meets with Nakan's mother, he gets to his office and leaves a message for Nakamura, stating that the incident at the organ selling building was connected to the deputy commissioner of police. Still at his office, Miyanishi finds out that Fukia is connected to 20 faces, and after he makes this discovery, he looks shocked. Back at the amusement park, Inoue, Hanasaki, and Kobayashi drive to Ayusawa's position to prevent him from committing suicide. Upon arriving at Ayusawa's position, Kobayashi sprints swiftly to prevent Ayusawa from jumping into the train tracks, but he falls to the ground because he gets terrifying flashbacks of his father. Just when Ayusawa is in midair heading for the tracks, Inoue reaches his position and catches him, preventing him from dying. Minutes after saving Ayusawa, Kobayashi remembers the last words of his mother, which is to live, and after that, the pain in his head stops. In another place, Miyanishi arrives at a spot and tries to call Nakamura. After dialing her number, he finds out that she is behind him holding a gun. Seconds later, Detective Nakamura pulls the trigger and kills Officer Miyanishi in cold blood. The following day, a bunch of police officers arrive at the firm's building to perform a thorough search of the property. While at it, Hansaki fumes in rage because he is unaware of the police officer's objective. Along the line, Inoue finds out from a police officer that they are there to collect evidence relating to Miyanishi's murder. It is at this point that Inoue, Hanasaki, and the others receive info from a police officer that Detective Nakamura killed Officer Miyanishi. Also, the officer reveals that it is suspected that Nakamura was under the control of 20 Faces when the incident happened, adding that Nakamura testified that 20 Faces might be Akechi. At this point, the officer's statement makes no sense to Hanasaki because he has seen Akechi fighting with 20 faces before. Moving on, the officer reveals that the other 20 faces they arrested in the past was a fake, and when Inoue asks him how he got the info, he declines to answer. Elsewhere, Nakamura gets interrogated at the police station, and the interrogator asks when she killed Officer Miyanishi. In response, Nakamura states that she does not know why she killed her colleague, adding that she had no idea what was going through her mind at the time. At sunset, Nakamura's superior gets off the phone with an unidentified person, after telling the person that everything is going according to plan. Meanwhile, while Akechi sits at a spot and observes what is going on in the news. The following day, Akechi meets up with Namakoshi, who is at a stadium watching a cricket match. Because Namakoshi is a retired police officer, Akechi wants him to use his old connections and help him. Soon, Akechi threatens to blackmail Namakoshi, and because of that, Namakoshi agrees to help Akechi and their meeting comes to an end. Later that afternoon, Miyanishi's colleague watches a live show on TV that displays a launch pad for a shuttle leading to a stratospheric plane. While watching the show, he thinks about Miyanishi, and then Namakoshi walks into 
Jason to the restaurant to meet up with him. During the meeting between Namikoshi and Miyanishi's colleague, 20 Faces watches their conversation from an audio sports car and gives off a weird smile in the end. That evening, sits alone in an apartment and watches TV. After some time, she proceeds to her bedroom and climbs her bed with her clothes on. The following day, Akechi meets with Namikoshi to receive information on where Miyanishi is being held. During the meeting with Namikoshi, he reveals the location of Nakamura, adding that Nakamura needs to be observed as part of a psychiatric exam. After some minutes, the meeting with Namikoshi comes to an end, and Akechi drives off in his car. Just after Akechi leaves, Namikoshi arrives at a different spot where he meets a man sitting beside a fishing pond. Soon, the unidentified man gives Namikoshi a fishing line and leaves the scene after confirming that Namikoshi did as he intended with Akechi. After Namikoshi raises the fishing line from the water, he sees money in a bag which signifies his payment. Later that night, Akechi gets to a location specified by Namikoshi earlier, and he disguises himself as a delivery man to get inside. Just when Akechi gets out of the elevator, a man dressed in a suit stops him to find out his objectives, but Akechi attacks the man and flees the scene. As a result, the man calls the rest of his colleagues because Akechi is an intruder to prevent Akechi from moving further. At this point, other armed men are aware of Akechi's presence, and one of them opens fire at Akechi when he sees him in a corner. After some minutes of exchanging bullets, Akechi lands a shot at the man's leg and proceeds to the stairs because the elevator beside him refuses to work. As Akechi proceeds up the stairs, he encounters heavy fire from armed men from both angles, but he manages to get past them by using a smoke grenade to his advantage. Following that, he uses the vent to move to the other side of the building while Nakamura takes a hot shower in her bathroom. After some minutes, Akechi gains access to Nakamura's apartment and sees her dressed in a nightrobe. On meeting Nakamura, he finds out that she is under 20 faces control, and he looks pissed as a result. Soon, a conversation begins between Nakamura and Akechi, where Nakamura accuses Akechi of using Hanasaki, Inoue, Kobayashi, and the others to his advantage and dumping them as he pleases. Seconds later, Nakamura reveals that 20 Faces is her boyfriend that she talked about earlier, adding that she has no idea when she fell under 20 Faces' control. In the end, Nakamura states that a new thrill has begun, and she looks forward to seeing the look on Akechi's face amid the thrills. The conversation between Akechi and Nakamura reaches a point where armed men led by Inagaki Heizu break into Nakamura's room and place Akechi in cuffs. The following day, Han Sasaki, Inoue, and Kobayashi all sit in Noro's apartment thinking about Miyanishi's passing and the fact that Akechi was accused of being 20 faces. After some time, Noro opens her laptop but a live video of 20 faces begins to play. While the video plays, Noro tries to locate 20 faces by tracing the video signal. Minutes into the live video, 20 faces reveals that he has Akechi in his custody and Inoue fumes up upon hearing this. Also, Niue asks to know where Akechi is, and 20 Faces displays the stratospheric plane that crashed into the sea earlier. After that, Hanasaki realizes that Akechi is in 20 Faces' vessel, and 20 Faces tells him and the rest of the team to come up in the sky and retrieve Akechi. Before 20 Faces ends the live video, he states that if Hanasaki and his team can save Akechi before sundown, they win otherwise, Akechi will cease to be him left. After the video session with 20 Faces ends, Inoue tells Noro to find the shortest route to the shuttle terminal so they can all arrive there swiftly. When Inoue gets into his car, he receives a call from Otomo, who is concerned about what is going on at the Space Expo. While on the call with Otomo, Inoue reveals that Akechi was taken by 20 faces, and Otomo realizes that Akechi is high up in the sky. Before the call with Otomo ends, Inoue tells Otomo, Katsuda, and Yamane to lay low for the day. Meanwhile, Otomo is not motivated about saving Akechi, but Yamane states that he wants to assist Akechi and the others. Hours later, some policemen enter into a brief argument with another armed squad where the armed squad reveals that they will clean up the mess that the policemen made. Elsewhere, Inoue, Hanasaki, and Kobayashi are present in the car, and he gives a speech about saving Akechi. Minutes later, they all arrive at the Space Expo, but when Kobayashi gets into the building, he finds out that no one is present. Seconds later, Kobayashi turns his back, only to find out that his friends are surrounded by armed men from the Special Security Force. Even as Inoue and the others try to convince the armed men that they are not threats, the leader of the policemen states that they are working with Akechi, adding that his superior ordered him to make sure they do not cause more trouble. Amid the accusations and confusion, the leader of the armed men tells Hanasaki and his team to surrender and follow them. At this point, Hanasaki and the others are put in a difficult situation because Akechi's sanity is at stake. Following that, Hanasaki and Inoue tell Kobayashi to escape because there is no time. Seconds later, Katsuda arrives at Yamane on his bike, 
and they both prevent the armed men from arresting Hanasaki and the rest of the team. Soon, Inoue tags along with Katsuda, while Kobayashi and Hanasaki run following Katsuda behind. While trying to evade the armed men, Inoue tells Hanasaki that the special security force is linked to 20 faces, and Detective Nakamura is the leader of that force. Elsewhere, Akechi is on his knees restrained by chains in 20 faces' lair, and after some time, he regains consciousness and sees 20 faces standing meters away from him. Back at the Space Expo, Hanasaki, Inoue, and the others are boxed in at a corner, but Inoue tells Hansaki and Kobayashi to escape, adding that he will hold off the the men with Kitsuda and Yamane's help. Before Hanasaki leaves, he receives a gun from Inoue and proceeds on his mission to save Akechi. Meanwhile, Akechi watches all that goes down at the Space Expo through multiple screens that 20 faces displays. At this point, Akechi realizes that all he did in the past was use his entire team. Back in Space Expo's building, Hansakai and Kobayashi run away to a point where some aircraft are present. Meanwhile, Akechi breaks his chains after hearing triggering words from 20 Faces' mouth. Afterward, Inoue, Katsuda, and Yamane manage to hold off the armed men, while Kobayashi and Hanasaki arrive close to the spacecraft. When Hanasaki and Kobayashi arrive meters away from the spacecraft, the spacecraft explodes, and Akechi, who watches from 20 Faces' screen, looks in shock. After the space shuttle explodes, Inoue and the others present and on the building feel the impact of the explosion. After some time, Hanasaki asks Noro if there is another way to get to space, but she answers, saying no. Even as the chances of going to the stratosphere are pretty slim for Hanasaki, he looks optimistic and tells Noro to come up with a plan. Just below Hanasaki's position, one of the armed men manages to get an angle of Inoue at a corner and fires a shot at Inoue's wheelchair, making Inoue fall to the ground in the process. After Inoue falls to the ground, the armed guard who took the shot orders his men to capture Inoue and the rest of his team. Afterward, Hanasaki and Kobayashi run to a point, but stop when they get interrupted by armed robots. Just as Hanasaki and Kobayashi try to make a run for the nearest exit, another robot blocks them. Following that, Hansaki runs to take cover, as the robots open fire at Kobayashi, who is unaffected by the bullets because of his powers. Meanwhile, Inoue and his team manage to defeat a bunch of the armed men who try to capture them. Surprisingly, Inoue manages to get on his feet and inflict pain on an officer who tries to capture him. Back in the situation with the robots, Kobayashi continues to receive countless chats from the robots. White Hanasaki seizes the opportunity to evade the scene following Kobayashi's wishes. Seconds later, Hanasaki makes it to the next floor while Inoue, Katsuda, and Yamane are surrounded by armed men once more. Soon, a massive vibration begins that makes the armed men think that it is an earthquake, but Otomo arrives at the scene from the ground with a massive drilling machine. Minutes later, the armed men open fire at Otomo's vehicle but Otomo deploys his drones the releases, a sleep-inducing chemical that makes the armed men present fall asleep. After some time, Hanasaki enters another space shuttle and tries to start the engines, while Kobayashi runs towards the shuttle after Hanasaki manages to start the engines. Elsewhere, the large machine that Otomo uses to distract the armed men loses power and it turns out that the machines present in the building are for exhibition purposes only. Also, the space shuttle loses power and lands on the ground when Hanasaki tries to take off with it. Meanwhile, Akechi struggles to free himself from the cuffs on his hand, but he bruises his wrist in the process. Soon, 20 Faces proceeds out of the shadows and mocks Akechi for killing both his dads in the past. Also, 20 Faces addresses Akechi as the villain in his story, adding that Akechi is indifferent to the pain of others. At this point, the words of 20 Faces trigger Akechi to the point where he attacks attempts to attack 20 Faces, even as he is restrained with cuffs. After some time, the conversation between Akechi and 20 Faces comes to an end as Akechi falls back on his knees after taking a nasty kick from 20 Faces. Back at Space Expo, the armed men surround Katsuda, Inoue, Yamane, and Otomo, yet they threaten to hurt Inoue if Hanasaki and Kobayashi do not surrender themselves. Along the line, one of the armed men testifies to framing Akechi to eliminate him and make the force look like the good guy. Because Katsuka disagrees with the man's perspective of good policemen, he gets beaten by the police officer while on his knees. Along the line, the officer threatens to kill Inoue and Hanasaki arrives just in time to prevent Inoue from getting shot by using some robots to distract the armed men in the process. However, Noro manages to hack into 20 Faces' vessel, floating in the stratosphere, setting it up for impact on Earth's surface. Minutes later, all armed men present in the Space Expo building point their weapons at Hanasaki and the rest of his team, while Kobayashi proceeds forward, 
and assumes a defensive position. Just when the armed men are about to open fire on Hanasaki's team, some police officer arrives at the scene and arrests the armed men following their leader's orders. Afterward, Noro notices that Twenty Face's vessel has stopped descending, and Akechi goes on a live video session and tells Hanasaki and the others not to exceed their limits. After the video session, Twenty Face's vessel begins to rise back into the atmosphere, while Hanasaki thinks of a way to reach the vessel. Soon, Otomo suggests that Hanasaki can use a launch pad to reach the vessel, and because of that, Hanasaki heads off with Katsuda's bike on a mission to meet up with the vessel before it reaches space. Just as Hanasaki leaves, Kobayashi chases after him, stating that the mission is his type of job. He wishes to join Hanaki on the mission, or at least take his place. On the contrary, Hanasaki intends to complete the suicide mission so he can earn his chance to return to the club. Minutes later, Hanasaki makes it to the roof while Kobayashi chases after Hanasaki so he can join him on the mission. At this point, Hanasaki gets on a platform, and he gets moves swiftly on his bike until he gets tossed into midair. While in midair, he activates his thrusters aiming for the vessel, but misses his first chance of attaching his rope to the vessel. On Hanasaki's next trial, he gets lucky, and man before it falls apartages to hook onto the vessel while Kobayashi screams Hanasaki's name from a distance. After Hanasaki makes contact with the vessel, he speaks to Inoue and the others through his mobile device confirming his position, and then throws the device away to get into the vessel. After the call session with Hanasaki, Kobayashi demands to be sent up into the atmosphere so he can join Hanasaki on the mission in 20 Faces Vessel. At first, Inoue tells Kobayashi that it is too late, but even after Kobayashi hears this, he still insists, and Inoue tells Otomo to help Kobayashi. After that, Otomo and Yamane head off to find a way for Kobayashi to meet up with Hanasaki on the vessel. Just above Inoue's position, Kobayashi stands and stares into the sky as the vessel ascends gradually into the atmosphere. While at it, Noro tries to encourage Kobayashi, and also appreciates him for his presence and contribution to the club. Minutes later, Otomto and Yamane arrive with a newly constructed space vessel, and they power it up to full capacity so Kobayashi can leave with it. After receiving the instruction on how to handle the vessel from Otomo and Noro, Kobayashi takes off as Noro gives the signal that launches Kobayashi into the atmosphere. After Kobayashi leaves, Otomo notices Kobayashi's blood on the ground, and it looks as if Kobayashi is bleeding from his feet. Elsewhere, Hanasaki manages to get access to Twenty Face's vessel and arrives at the cockpit. While at the cockpit, he takes out his firearm for protection and notices cuffs on the ground after some seconds. The cuffs are stained with blood, and after some time, Hanasaki notices someone behind him and looks back only to find out that the person behind him is Akechi. Although Hanasaki risked his life to get on the vessel, Akechi does not look pleased because he does not want Hanasaki to get to the vessel. However, However, Hanasaki expresses his intentions, which is to beat 20 faces and win the game. Following that, 20 faces proceeds out of a door minutes into Hanasaki's conversation with Akechi. Just outside the vessel, Kobayashi comes out of his space vessel and proceeds inside 20 faces vessel to meet up with Hanasaki. Meanwhile, 20 Faces holds a gun pointing at Hanasaki, but when Hanasaki tries to aim his weapon at 20 Faces, Akechi prevents him from doing so, stating that he has done enough. After that, Akechi tells Hanasaki to let me handle things. Because of the rate at which the vessel is moving up, its exterior components begin to fall apart, gradually leaving Hanasaki and the others with little time to survive. At this point, Akechi does not want Hanasaki to be involved, and surprisingly, 20 Face Abuse triggers a button that activates several escape pods so that Hanasaki can survive. Minutes later, Hansaki shoots Akechi in the leg because he does not want 20 faces to escape. After that, he pushes Akechi into the escape pod, and after Akechi gets into the pod, the pod gets detaches from the main vessel and flies back to Earth. Because Hansaki sent Akechi aiming for Earth, 20 faces looks pissed and aims a gun at Hansaki because he wanted to be with Akechi. While 20 faces aims a gun at Hansasaki, Kobayashi walks into the room and heads straight to Hanasaki pissed about the fact that Hansaki left him alone back at Space Expo. Seconds after Kobayashi walks into the room, 20 Faces notices that Kobayashi is bleeding from his legs, and he uses the opportunity to strangle Kobayashi and point a gun at him. While at it, 20 Faces mocks Kobayashi because he does not have control of his powers. On the contrary, 20 Faces wants to escape the vessel before it falls apart to meet Akechi for some twisted reason. While 20 Faces points a gun at Kobayashi, Kobayashi yells at Hanasaki, telling him to kill 20 Faces. Just when Hansaki tries to pull the trigger, Akechi crashes into the vessel, tossing Kobayashi and Hanasaki falling to Earth. 
Meanwhile, Akechi, who is still on the vessel, pulls 20 faces upwards because he is at risk of falling to his death. While in mid-air, Hanasaki tries to pull Kobayashi to himself and they both fall into the sea. Back on the vessel, Akechi appreciates 20 faces for keeping his promise, which is giving him thrills, adding that he will not run anymore. After that, 20 faces gives off a weird smile and laughs as they both float in the atmosphere. Days later, Inoue graduates from high school, and a female student congratulates him on his graduation, while Hanasaki and Kobayashi proceed to complete their next mission. It turns out that the Boy Detectives Club is running again under Inoue's leadership. All also, because of Inoue's testimony, the police were able to prove that Akechi is not 20 faces, although Akechi's whereabouts remain unknown. One afternoon, Hanasaki and Kobayashi walk down a street and see a boy attempting to commit suicide by jumping off a rooftop. Minutes later, Hanasaki and Kobayashi arrive at the boy's position to prevent the boy from killing himself. Along the line, Hanasaki hands the boy his business card and Kobayashi asks the boy if he wants to live or die. The end.